all here raising money for Malala Fund, an incredible charity working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. My name is Samarasi, and I will be your host for the first run of the day, which is, of course, Kaguya Nikki with Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. With us on commentary is Demarine, and it looks like we're about ready to get started, so I hope you're all ready for Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Well, good morning, good afternoon. I'm Kaguya Nikki. And I'm Demarine. All right, before we're gonna start, um, I have a short thing to mention. Um, so we are gonna go fast. We are gonna go real fast. We're actually gonna go so fast. Um, as you can see, we're turning the speed multiplier two times four that I have heard of some people that have encountered motion sickness. Uh, I don't know how many there are, uh, but I just want you to be careful. Um, if you can't handle it, then all I can sadly do is um, point you to runs I have done recently that do it at a slower speed. But yeah, with that, I would say we're ready. Three, two, one, let's go. This is the PC re-release of the beloved RPG from the 2 era, 2006 on the PS2 in the United States and Japan, early 2007 in Europe. Uh, extremely well-loved game, even though it did some things a little bit differently than a lot of Final Fantasy games. It is set in the world of Ivalice, so same lineage as Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, we are in a tutorial, which we are going to go through incredibly fast, and this is what teaches you to like fight things and use <laughs> items and do all that stuff. We're not doing any of that. <laughs> I mean, we are just fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eventually we're just going to start running from everything. But yes, yeah, so I guess there's a couple there's a couple of soldiers who have to who have to be removed from the battlefield here. Yeah, so we're just starting off very yeah. We'll teach you everything and in that sense there are a lot of so we, whoever everyone who remembers the original ff12 version remembers that it was kind, kind of slow paced and everything and you had a huge license board yeah they made us the internet international zodiac job system for the ps2 uh, but sadly the ps2 couldn't really handle it so whoever has actually played that, it actually lagged so bad on the PS2 that they didn't even release it. Um, so that was changed now with the remaster with the Zodiac Age. And on top of that, they also added some new stuff. So some things that, like the speed up, was already in the IZJS uh, version, uh, which was just a speed up. We're still not sure. Like, it should be times four speed, but it's lagging so much that I'm not, like, it is times two at best. Um, here we get times two and times four. Uh, but obviously, we'll just go, go, go with times four as much as possible. Um, if you're wondering why are we allowing this, well, <laughs> well, part one, it is just part of the game since the IZJS version. And part two, it is really easy to trigger all you need to do with the controller is press the l1 button try to ban that i mean <laughs> just trying to ban that sounds like a horrible idea i'm sorry this is like the coolest looking speed run because it goes so fast but all right so we're done with the story of the the invasion of dalmasca by the bad guys who have judge helmets and look really cool but they're the bad guys we promise uh the, the kid that we were playing as at the tutorial is probably dead but who cares um you know, that's kind of just how it goes at that point in time. The other guy that showed up in the tutorial, Bosch, he's also unimportant. I promise we will not meme on him later. <laughs> um, okay, I'm Never. lying. <laughs> there will be memes. <laughs> yeah. For those interested, so, yeah, this run with four times speed is roughly three hours. Um, with two times speed, it is four. And without speed up, it, was, it would be um, roughly six hours. A bit less if you can go really, really fast. Yep. But we're going to learn about the hunt board here, which is which is a fantastic way to get items and experience and explore the world uh, in a casual playthrough. We are going to fight a tomato. That's it. Yep. So, yeah, um, th this game is sometimes I'm not sure if lovingly or non lovingly. I think it depends on the person called single player MMO for multiple reasons. Um, one of them definitely is that we have a pretty big world and a lot of side, que side quests and hunts. Um, which, yeah, we'll do exactly the amount of hunts we have to do thanks to story, which is basically Sorry. this and, well, in theory, another one later on. 
Oh, right, yeah. In theory, there is one other, but that's like... But that's if, that, if that actually counts um, officially, I'm not even sure. Like, we get the prompt, but... Okay, so coming up, Rogue Tomato, we could just... Yeah, no. So this is a marathon run, and this one is really evilly positioned. Um, if you want to go really fast, you try to dodge it to the side, but... Yeah, let's just not. <laughs> Like, this is also the way you can just risk your run on. <laughs> yeah. We're not here for that. Um, it was all like... Tomato, thanks. Yeah, Tomato all runs away because it's a jerk and we're going to hit it again because, you know. We have slain this extremely dangerous foe. We'll get, like, 200 gil or something. I don't remember what the real word is for uh, this. We won't even because we don't want to pick it up. Um, oh, it's right, we don't 300 to... gil, one or two potions, and a teleport stone. So if you actually want a third teleport stone, that would be the easiest one to get um, for the early game. But, but of course, kill... yeah. yeah. Killing the rogue tomato yeah. also does make the plot go, which is why you have to do it. Um, as now we find out that, you know, bad stuff's happening in town, which, you know, of note, this, of course, is a storyline of high intrigue, politics, and manipulation seen through the eyes of a teenage boy. Um, Vaughn is our hero, technically, although he will pale in importance compared to most of the other characters that join the party. Yeah, he, he is He is kind of there to introduce us to the party, and he had his brother Rex, who we've seen in the tutorial for, like, three minutes. Wow. Doors, I'm telling you. If you want to see the SMW runs, then you will see more of these amazing doors and triggers, which are just impossible. Just leaving it out there. Yep, old man in the the old man in the in the slums tells you how to escape from the city because you don't want to be here. This kind of this this is kind of terrible right now. We're gonna try to find our way out of here, but you know there's gonna be some fighting involved because it's an RPG. Let's be real. Yeah, so, so basically in the early game, like, we don't have all the cool story characters and all that, and we need someone to tell us what to do because, I mean, every main character, like, needs someone to, somewhere, someone to lead them, and yeah, that's Old Man Dallin over there. So we will see him for, like, the first hour and then never again. So yeah, but, yeah. and our goal is now that we want to, we want to rob, we want to rob the palace. But we need a way in. We don't have yeah. a way in right now. Yeah, exactly. So what we're doing with that, so that's basically where this um, side quest comes from, because we are making a very fantastic sunstone that even kids ma can ma create here. Like, it's basically kids' work, but that's the key, like, for an important door in the palace, because plot. <laughs> yep, that's Penelope. She's part of the party. She is definitely not your girlfriend. Um, but yeah, sunstones, there are four of them out in the field, and they will give us some amount of power to the stone that we are carrying around anywhere between... Well, we're not carrying it yet, but we will be carrying it eventually. God, I'm a little ahead of myself, aren't I? Yeah, and now we're just quitting the game. All right, we're done. Cool. Can I go? Can I leave now? No. Nope. So yeah, one of the other additions that has happened in the ICGS version was the addition of Trial Mode. With Trial Mode has 100 different flaws of enemies. Um, that you can fight with a party you've made in the main game. The only difference, though, is that in TZA now, you can actually carry over LP and items from trial mode to the main game again. And as you might have seen just now, the first floor here has a chest that has a diamond armlet. And the diamond armlet sells for 6,000 gil. And, of course, we can't equip it because we need to get to Diamond Armlet on the license board, which we'll explain in a little bit because it has to do with how you can equip things. You can't just equip things. You need licenses. You need to, you know, have the ability to use it. So you need to be trained and you need to see the DMV and they teach you how to parallel park and then you can put an armlet on. And I don't know why parallel parking is a thing in Rabin Naster. They don't even have cars. <laughs> they make it work. Yeah, Sunstone. the license Look. tutorial would have actually already happened, but th this version is also friendly enough to just cut it out and be like, no, you don't need that. Uh, but yeah, no, we actually get it exclusively for the money because, yeah, it's just a lot of money. We're gonna okay, a lot of here money. we now collecting energy. Somewhere between 25 and 60% from each rock. 
Uh, 38 is good. We're hoping for at least 33 on the first three so that we don't have to run out to the fourth one. We do, going to the third one is not really a time loss because we need to make a quick pit stop in the middle here anyways. Uh, running out to the fourth one is a total pain. No one likes it. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like two, uh, I would say three crystal is just 95% of the time. Two crystal, how we call it, is like 1% and four crystal is like 4%. Usually you get three, but sometimes RNG is just very special. Yep. But here's our pit stop after the first crystal, which we need to talk to this guy because it sets up the it sets us up to be able to teleport here later. Uh, but we also need to buy a pile of Phoenix Downs. So we sold the Diamond Armlet, bought nine Phoenix Downs, which we'll need very shortly from now. We're not going to use them to resurrect party members, hopefully. Uh, we are going to use them to uh, get get some extra experience here. No, we can't. We cannot. Use, they are not meant to be used to resurrect our party members. Um, so yeah, we could. In theory, it would optimally save time to activate the crystal there, but then our party members would get healed, and we want our party members to not be healed. <laughs> Yo. Perfect. Fifty-five on the second. Hello there. Good, 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 good game. We're, we definitely cannot get. Uh, less than 20 here so we are or yeah. 25 here so we're in the clear um, so we're going to get the standard 3 and then we're going to head back home yep how's that we are done for the beginning get some nice rewards um, basically teleport stones two of them which are super important um, everything else we need, every other teleport stone we need later. Uh, so yeah, we haven't explained. So we have two types of crystals where you can save. The blue ones are just save crystals. Um, yeah, they also heal. And the orange ones can also teleport you at the cost of a teleport stone. Um, the one in Rabanasta in our hometown is activated by default. And every other one we need to, like, touch activate once. And yeah, but, um... We will be able to get teleport stones hopefully later on at some point when we'll be grinding. Okay, buying the most OP spell the early game can ever offer. Yep, buying dark magic. Uh, once you buy a spell, anybody who has the license on it on their board can use it. Um, so we are going to make sure that our early game party can use it because it is the only AOE spell until we get access to level two magic, which is like in a casual playthrough is like multiple sessions in and the speed run is like over an hour in so uh yeah the next AOE damaging spell would be arrow which, which we'll is, also yeah. get but it's a lot later <laughs> yep and then eventually we get fireaga as our third and final primary AOE oh, damage fire spell. Eye also do you get fire also okay yeah, yeah right you need that to grind slimes don't you yep uh, uh okay you you okay we need some luck on the damage rolls now yeah. this is not okay. the luck on the damage rolls i wanted to see um so okay Penando, are... i'm not sure how much damage you deal but oh that's a lot of damage um, Whoa. um so, what so what we're trying to do here um is we're trying we'll to get this. what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get vaughn to critical health uh he needs to be under was it like 15 10 percent 10 percent i'm no, at 10 percent which means we need 10 or less perfect great fantastic uh thankfully yeah. the game auto saves a lot um which we're going to take advantage of here but vaughn needs to be at yeah, 10 or fewer hit points we're going to turn the speed down and turn down the battle speed so we can keep track yeah vaughn just completely low rolled the first hit was a 37 so using the first attack here was not Eight. confirmed anymore perfect now, Pinello is going to give up the ghost here. We're going to go over here. And this spawns, if you have all um, your, your character in this critical status in this particular spot, a rare enemy spawns. And there are rare enemies in this game that ha all have specific spawning requirements. Dustia requires that your party be in critical health. Um, so if both Vaughn and Pinello are in critical health, it'll spawn. But we don't want Pinello getting experience. So instead, we just knock her out. Um, as you can see, every it is undead and since this is a final fantasy game that is divisible by six don't ask me why that works it works in final fantasy six it works in final fantasy 12 the undead can be instantly killed with resurrection items it also works in well it depends in eight you have a chance to miss in ten it deals massive damage and 
Nine it is also a bit special. That's fair. Uh, like it kills one in ten times and the other times it, it leaves with single digit HP. Cool. Uh, but yeah, as you might be able to see in the top right, <laughs> um, the speed, I have turned down the speed to times two speed because you can see this is pretty fast and <laughs> You have to menu no out. No one the has Phoenix been crazy down. enough to actually try to do this at two times, at four times speed. I believe, at least because, not in a run. <laughs> well, what ends up happening is that if you make a mistake, Dusty cast dark on you and you explode. Um, which yeah. we're not, we're not all about that life. So, and like we you, are leaving. You'll see that we're leaving really quickly too, because otherwise it won't respawn. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Some people try to pick up the drops, but you, they have more quality of life. The root itself does not require you to get them. Um, why is that the case? Because I made the route and I definitely made sure I should have picked that up, but okay. Yeah, the last one you can uh, always grab, but... Yeah, the last one you can grab. Call it Marathon Muffles. Uh, but yeah, um, other things to note there. So, as long... You can see that we went out of the screen very quickly. That is because um, as long as the experience num and LP number you get does not show up, it doesn't completely count as killed. You get the stats, but it doesn't count as killed, and hence it doesn't respawn. It will just spawn again when you enter the zone again. Yeah, rare enemies in this game. Um, there is, like, a quest later on that is related to them that, you know, again, we're not going to see in the speed run, but they can normally, in a casual playthrough, only be killed once each. So, yeah, now, now that we have gotten at least a few levels, I wouldn't even call us heavily overleveled. <laughs> Like, it's nice. Dusty gives 1k experience, and everyone gets those because the levels of the other party members will be, um, like, based on Vance level. But, yeah. We'll also see later on how this is just not gonna be enough. <laughs> but for now, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I will now... Just running around into the castle. Uh, does our lovely host have anything to play? Or donations? You got it. We definitely have some donations in here. Uh, first up, from Royal Blue Wizard, donating $25. They say, best of luck, Nikki. You got this. Always glad to support a great cause and see games I love being run really fast. Remember Firaga. Always remember Firaga. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I did that a few runs ago. <laughs> and we actually also have a $50 donation from Anonymous with no comment, but I'm willing to bet that they think this is pretty amazing because I sure do. I honestly cannot keep up with how fast you're moving right now. <laughs> yeah, especially with the early parts now. Uh, the corridors are pretty slim and narrow and... Misstepping is so easy. You good for one more? Yeah, sure. All right. I've got one from Kausa Blue who donates $25 and says, Wait, are we sure this is FF and not a certain blue hedgehog? Because it looks like Van has got to go fast. Yeah, so that you could see. I accidentally picked up that antidote. <laughs> This room, this room is a thing. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Of course. Apparently, there's a big banquet happening in the Imperial Palace, so that's where we're going right now. We're running around. We're trying to Over get here. us a meal. Uh, but we're gonna start yelling at guards. Um, this is the first really memeable part of the run, honestly, because this is a puzzle section. Uh, yeah. But you've got to manipulate the guards in position so that you can access the door that you need to make pro forward <laughs> progress and not get arrested because you're not supposed to be here. She yells a guard so that they move from the spot you want to be. And they also, won't even notice it. Also, they don't keep chasing you. They just they just move Hello? one they just move one intersection. Hey buckethead. Ah, uh, there is a good old buckethead. Yeah. Community yeah, sure. We'll Over go all the way back, cause yep. triggers are a thing in this game. They are amazing, <laughs> and especially this one because this one basically only works in the circle. If you go right into the middle, you will not be able to trigger it at all. Yep. 
it's really fuzzy on 1x speed, and I still don't understand how you can do this on 4x speed. Right. You hit the rock, you move to the door, you push the button. Yep. You le leave all those bucket heads behind as we're going to go a little bit deeper into the castle. And, and use that stone that we just created, that sandstone. Right. Perfect. <laughs> Remember how we made that for a door now in here? <laughs> like... that's, yep, that's right. We needed that as a key to get in. Door closes behind us because, you know, that's how this works. Yeah, because apparently no one even knows of this. Uh, Hidden switch in the back. I love the screen. That's great. Hidden door. I don't want to tell you how long it took me to find those my first playthrough. Please don't ask. <laughs> I won't. Thank you. It, it, it is amazing that you can't even remember it. Okay, so we hold up right because yeah. <laughs> you need to know in screen in some screens just which direction to hold. Because it's not like any other way will help you to make it through these screens. Well, it's just, yeah, we, we hold up right and then we um let it go. I didn't know we were speedrunning Zelda 1, but okay, let's keep going. And yeah, also as you can see, I'm also manually fleeing. Fleeing is slightly faster movement than just running. Yep. Amazingly. Because we need to go even faster. <laughs> so this tutorial is is required, and this is the... I would call it the most maligned, but also most beloved piece of Final Fantasy XII and gives it that solo MMO feel, which is the Gambit system. Everybody starts with a couple of slots, and you can tell them what to do, right? Like, basically, so instead of having to menu all the time for three characters in a real-time battle situation that is going at times four speed... So we we're going uh, fast like you wouldn't believe. Uh, instead, you can tell people what to do beforehand, and then they will just execute it based upon these instructions. You basically are programming your uh, your party. It's pretty cool, honestly. Um, and it you can is still, amazing. You can still like manually control characters. You can switch characters in combat. It's really neat. Uh, highly recommend playing this game casually if you haven't, if you're into RPGs in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just for the Gambit system alone, because it will make you feel really, really powerful when it works correctly. Um, we're unlocking the Red Battle Mage job for everybody here, which gives us access to some pretty good armor, but also uh, Attack Magic 1. <laughs> okay, Magic 1 is, lit is all we need. <laughs> yep, it's expensive. It costs us a bunch of license points. Uh... We don't care, uh, because we're going to go ahead and, you know, set everybody up to start automatically casting Dark. All right, yep, so Dark is going to carry us a bit. Um, so as I said, fleeing is slightly faster, but we also get one LP license point whenever you kill an enemy, no matter how strong. Like, you, will need, you need to go really late in order to get, like, more than one. So just killing enemies on the way is really nice to get some license points going. And yeah, we got a few few levels, and we got Dark, which is an AoE spell, so we'll just kill stuff on the way. Yep, fleeing stops your characters from engaging, but if you stop fleeing momentarily, the Gambit system will allow Balthier and Fran to start casting. It's an AoE spell. Dark does pretty solid damage for this part of the game, obviously. As you can see, oh god, those guards, they're, they're all dead. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> um, I've turned on Fran's Gambits. <laughs> <laughs> now we have three dark casters instead of two yeah mostly because well i mean here we have flans and later on the real boss yeah and, and flans just oh and some genius i knew i knew this was too fluent forgot again to push this also to dark no no that fan also wants to cast dark okay slight difference on lowest hp instead of highest you will see the difference in a few minutes. Yep. Over here, we have Amalia, who joins us, you know, who is part of the Resistance and is a guest character. And okay, we We've never seen her before in, like, any of the cutscenes because we have not paid attention and skipped all of them. Wait, there are cutscenes? Yeah, coming up to the... I'm sorry. You can't do this to me. You can't cut the cutscenes out like this. I mean, I guess you can. Yeah, so first... Boss, I would say fire main. Um, to note, fire main takes double damage in the water, so we just run into the water. 
we don't get the skip a push fire, uh, but it's okay. Well, usually you get one. You can also yeah. sometimes only get, like, you get something between zero and two. One is average. So yeah. We this, has been a very average run. this has been a very average run so far. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. VTubers, speedrunners. We are taking over. And apparently we are all scheduled to, like, start off days. Um... But yeah, basically, and yeah, we are going fast, but you also always have to do something. Yep. So we escape from the waterway, but we do end up in prison anyhow, because, you know, we messed up. <laughs> because every good RPG needs a prison break. It sure does, and they took away all our weapons and armor, not that it really matters all that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could take away our, pr uh, our weapons and armor and we wouldn't care. But yeah, ba basically, we're not only breaking out of prison, we are also getting someone else out of prison. Uh, who, who, could we be, is, who could we be helping escape from prison? Who else would be a prisoner in a prison like this? Also getting this really, really amazing chest. So you all might remember the OG had like four chests you are not allowed to open for the Zodiac Spear, so yada yada best weapon in the run. Um, yeah, they kind of changed the chests completely, and in a good way, I would say. Instead, we now have lots of chests that have amazing content that you can always get once, but only once. So after you've gotten it, you can't get it again. But that means we just get 2,500 gil just lying around there. Which we need. I mean, wouldn't say no to lots of money, right? No, never. Not a chance. But yeah, so we get, uh, we charge up the the power in this particular part of the ruins, and so the lights are on, which is great. When the lights go out, more powerful enemies spawn and things get bad, but we're we're in a hurry to get things, get out of here, so uh, Nikki knows the route, so she's just gonna run us out of here. Yeah. So we have some charge thingy. Um, yeah, we'll look out for it, but... I mean, basically, whenever we kill a big mimic, it just charges to basically full because we won't let it get down that much. Mm -hmm. Normally, you've got to be really consistent about getting through and killing off the battery mimics and making sure that you don't lose charge because things get worse and you lose the lights. And Yeah, that's not really a concern here. We're just going to cast Dark on them a few times and they're going to explode and then we'll be fine. See, there we go. Blue one up, so charge back to 99%. So we activate this switch in order to open a gate, which will take some charge, but I mean, remember that was a battery mimic? I just left one there. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, usually I don't even activate one's gambits, but just making sure. Because yeah, we have seen the undeads, uh, like the ghouls that spawned at the beginning. Those absorb dark damage, and I just don't want to deal with them. Yep. So, of course, in our in our travels, of course, the two people in our party right now we have not yet met because we've not seen any of the cutscenes at this point, but it is uh, two very notorious Sky Pirates because, you know, Vaughn wants to be a Sky Pirate too because this is definitely Skies of Arcadia. Uh, this is Skies of Arcadia, right? Uh, no. <laughs> In the wrong run. Darn. Uh, shoot, let me get the better notes. Right, Final Fantasy XII, also Notorious Sky Pirates. They probably have an airship. That's Vaughn's hope. He wants an airship because airships are cool. Um, <laughs> but more importantly, we are we are going to break them out because, again, we do want airship access eventually. Um, and also Sky Pirates are cool. To be um, fair, also, if you have the choice between having an airship and not having an airship, I, I, I think there is only one answer. Yeah, but then you have to deal with, like, the Dalmaskin vehicle registration rules, and, <laughs> you know, you have to register your airship, and then that, that's a pain. It's a lot of time, and here's a boss. Um, what? How? How? So, this, this shouldn't happen. So, remember when I said we have lowest HP? We had said to kill that small battery in the exam. So, what killing that small battery in the mix does, usually, is that instead of the shock storm attack, it uses Breath of Life and Spawn in order to create a new one. Some of this mimic queen... For I have not seen this ever since the strat was created. 
hadn't realized that her child was killed and didn't create a new one. Thanks, Mimikyu. Yeah. You rock. Good, to think good timing Del or something. Air could taste so sweet. And yeah, Where here's the we? only cutscene we cannot skip. <laughs> Everything else oh, has been turned skippable, basically. All right, we broke out this other guy, too. Yes. What's his name? Uh, Bosh. Von Ronsenberg. Of Damaska. <laughs> Damaska. <laughs> Who is supposedly dead. He's definitely dead. Totally dead. Except he's running around with us. Yeah. We'll get to that later. But, I mean, he is dead. Right now he's dead. So that is what a he... high-ranking politician said, so he has to be dead. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense, actually. Yeah. Isn't that how the world works? Yep. So we hop back to Nalbina here. Uh, we're going to grab this teleport stone, uh, but we're going to leave. We're going to, you know, crack our first teleport stone, head back to Ravenaster with, uh, well, was with Balthier and Fran, but they leave us, and Bosch leaves us, and we're all alone again and sad. Yeah, that's the one time we actually get rid of our party. Now we're wrapped up in some sort of weird international intrigue or something, because that's how all this works, because there's a lot of good storyline and a lot of interesting politics. Instead, we're just going to talk to this old man. <laughs> Yeah, so we are alone again, so we again don't know what to do. So we're asking the old man, because that's what he's there for. Uh, I really should not. So, so, this is the worst in four times, which I hate the small way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a reason why I'm at least trying. We'll see if we can get it. Uh, but more about that later. Uh, but yeah, now that we have basically met all our party members at some point, it's time to collect all of them and then never leave, let go of them again. There we go. Bosch joins us again. He's back. Still dead. Still dead. Apologizing for letting one, like everyone down. He is just a bit depressed right now. Everyone's super sad, basically. Yeah. And yeah. But our friend Pinello also got captured um, in the cutscenes that we didn't see. So basically, we need, and, and we know we need to go to Bejerba, which is, well, <laughs> it is a floating island, which is kind of a problem. But yeah, how do you get best to floating islands? Uh, probably an airship. I bet we get an airship here. Yeah. Also, look at these Moogles. I only know this kind of in-town teleportation from MMOs. Like, if you really wanted to know a reason why this is called single-player MMO, like, these Moogles are it for me. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're, they're adorable. They're, all Moogles are adorable. These Moogles are especially adorable. Uh, we sadly don't get to meet the most adorable Moogle of them all, but that's all right. Most adorable Moogle of them all? Yeah, Mont Blanc. Oh, yeah. You Have know, you ever seen a Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced speedrun? I have, yeah. <laughs> it is in the top 10 of biggest anime betrayals ever. Uh, now I'm sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. All right, Lamont has joined our party. I don't think another side character we really don't care about. Um, yeah, we can talk about guest characters because guest characters have also changed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, people that played the PS2 version might remember, um, later on maybe Lassa was someone who had just an infinite amount of potions and was just throwing all the potions to heal your characters. Um, in the later versions now, we actually have more control over the guest characters. Meaning we can actually um, change their gambits, which also means, well, they don't have their own stock of items anymore. To compensate say that, so... Uh, they have a bit more spells, and they also come with items when they enter our party. So we get items like, yo, know, rare aerial, um, like high potions, dispel modes, uh, domain calvados in the end, like lots of neat stuff. Oh yeah, shot mode and an eroga mode as well. Uh, 
and one of them will have a very important ability for the stretch of time that he's in the party, which I'm sure that Nikki will talk about extensively when that oh, time yeah. comes. Oh, yeah. Um, soonish, actually. Very soon, in fact. Oh, Vaughn's my goodness. Health. Since when does, do I get Vaughn to die here? But yeah, um, since we are just running away now, if you have any any we'll donations, I think now is a good time. Absolutely. I've got $15 here from Wody. Uh, hashtag Mebo. Good luck, Nikki. Always love to see FF12 TZA get some love. Here's hoping Hydro plays nice today. Let's donate to my near family as well. Yes, thanks a bunch. Yeah, and I'd actually just like to everyone take this opportunity to let everyone know, did you know that one of our fantastic prizes today is a sealed copy of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age for Nintendo Switch? Well, you do now. So if you love this game and maybe, just maybe, you want to give this speedrun a try with a minimum donation of $10, you can enter to win this prize. So get your donations in to have the chance to win. I've also got one more that I really want to read. It's from Mom, and it's for $30, and says, Good luck, runners. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Somewhere in oh. that ra realm of donations, we in our running away, we we ran past Begomnin and Pals, the, you know, they're, they're, they're out to get us. Uh, you fight them casually. We don't. We're not here about that life. You, do, you also don't fight some casualties. They are pretty strong. I mean, you could, but you will have to grind a lot for that. Yep. So now we're going to tell everybody that Bosch is alive, and we're going to bring him back to life. Uh, yeah, great mini game. I'm already turning the face down because we want to try and uh, beat three pixels too far to the right or something. Yeah, because you want to try to hit, like, everybody in this particular room here. Yeah, but precision yeah. is just more important than actual speed here, because, I mean, the shouting does not get any faster, but, yeah. Three is still okay. Three is pretty standard, so. Cool, but we, we get enough people to believe that uh, that Andor has been lying to everybody about Bosch, that Bosch is alive. So, we've, A, we've brought Bosch back to life, so good job, us. Uh, the second thing is, though, is that the uh, the soldiers are now onto us and they don't like us, unfortunately. So now we're going to get arrested again, sort of, ish. Well, ba basically, Andor, like the high-ranking politician of Fujiaba, knows, um, and they're like, "Hey, you you come over here. This, this is the story our big boss has been telling us. Um, well, like we know you, we don't want to do anything against you, but here, could you stop telling people the truth, please." <laughs> Can you please lie to everybody like we're doing? That would rule, thanks. And I mean, uh, our goal for doing that was also only to talk to Andor. We were just Got like, it. hey, we want to talk to the head honcho. If you don't let us in, we'll talk stuff. <laughs> but yeah, we were able to get our foot in the door. That's important. But yeah, have you ever thought about how, how stupid strat speedrunners can come up with? I mean, I've, I've seen speedrunners do some things that have made me go, why are you doing this? Um, okay, so first things first, just for the sake of... So basically, um, so now we have Vosla in the party. Vosla has a very amazing ability. This ability is called Traveler. What Traveler does is, from the last time you've used Traveler, it saves the last three digits. And then if you cast it again within the next 990 to 999 steps, you deal like 10,000 damage. Else you deal like the amount of steps times two. Um, but yeah, and if you haven't used it yet, then the default value is zero. So the next small fight here, which is not the biggest, but simply because you can, um, some people have gotten the idea, hey, if possible, try to just be from the beginning of the run to here good enough with your steps in order to cast Traveler on these soldiers. Fear not their numbers. So you Take have like 12,000 steps to get here and you have a leeway of 200 steps on 4 times speed. And oh goodness, we actually get it, but I still want to get high potions because else we are gonna die. Um, 
Fosla, could you please just cast Traveler? Thank you. So yeah, the Traveler Manip. Also, here's our first instance of the, the victory theme because you don't get it very often because you're normally fighting things in a sort of an open world MMO type scenario rather than these closed scenarios for bosses. So enjoy the no, victory fan forever. I think you get it pretty often. It's just that this is the only incident in which you can't skip it. Oh, really? Huh, yeah. neat. It's been a hot Like minute, at least so. on every, like on every Aeon you would get it. On, uh, I know you can get it on Belias. You can get it on Tiamat. Yeah, but those are also uh, like fixed boss encounters, or at least you know single yeah, location yeah. boss encounters. There, you don't like get it like fighting Rogue Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, now we have rescued the princess Ash. We have formerly have seen her as Amalia. And oh, she we was have important. Five out of six. She... All right. Yeah, she, she kind of was important. I mean, she was too cute to not be important. Yeah, it's a Final Fantasy thing. Yeah. Also, talking about, like, good chests and confirmed chests, we'll pick one up here. Because over here are two Reflect Gambits, and we really want one of them for a boss later on. Yep. Otherwise, we get to enjoy... This is probably the one of the most banging tracks in the entire uh, OST. Uh, Final Fantasy XII soundtrack is stellar. Uh, incredibly good. Uh, Fossler ditches us. We do get Pinello back, though, so now we've got the full the full complement of folk here. And now we get to fight the commander of the ship. Oops. Uh, okay, we're still fine. We move for Swan over here because he's knows arrow. Arrow is an AoE, and we don't want all three to be hit if we can avoid it. Kill him before Greater Barrier goes off, because otherwise that protects him from damage for a bit, which is annoying, or at least it reduces it, which we're not into. Probably reduce um, it. It doesn't really matter. Dark is strong enough. Also, now we want to save our high potions for more important fights. So we're all back together in Bujerba, all six of us. Uh, the gang's all here. We're going to go back to the Marquis of Dondor here to talk to him a second time. And let him know that we we did the deed of, you know, getting sold out by Vossler. But otherwise, we're fine. Yeah. N now we don't like. Now we don't need like Vaughn and Dallin anymore in order to tell us where to go. N now we have the actual story that we kind of get thrown into, which is Bash and Ash trying to. I don't know if it but is it Bash and Ash trying to take revenge or it is is it Vossler trying to become the hero of the world? That's a really good question. Man. I, I think it's Fran just trying to stop rolling her eyes at literally everybody in her path. <laughs> Maybe even that. So yeah, we finally start buying some stuff, like Hura and Race for um, the healer that we'll get at some point. Um, yep. Protect, Arrow. which kind of is supposed to make things safer, and Arrow for the few fights in which Dark is not important, which is basically one fight. And we grab I some status curing me. items because, you know, you want to have those on hand just in case. Yeah, silence and uh, petrify are actually status effects and can be inflicted soonish. And they're really bad, obviously, because we're relying on spellcasters to do pretty much 100% of our damage. Yeah, also we haven't talked about it yet. Um, as you remember, we don't really, haven't really bought armor yet or anything. Um, so we are running with the guest character simply because they have a bit higher level and they have armor. And so that's great. Also getting this always golden amulet, which doubles the LP of the character that gets it. Very good. Yeah, we're gonna need that. Yeah, that gives us like a thousand LP in the end, I wanna say. Roughly. That's a lot of LP. That's a lot, that's a lot of LP. But yeah, now we're running through the I want to say water treatment facility. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, of course, now that I finally switched, they are waking up Vosla again. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't need to. So yeah, the one annoying part about running with guest characters is that in every cutscene, you kind of, like, lose a party and gain it again, which means, basically just means that the guest cannot be the party leader. Because the guest cannot be the like the party leader of like the 
like the only one alive, basically. You need one yep. of the main party members to be alive. Um, also, I need to do this. Because it's traveler time. 655. I should really write that down. Demi, could you write that down for me? Yeah, 655. Got it. Yep. Because, yeah, now we want 10,000 damage on certain bosses. Because we, we are starting 10, to get really underleveled. It's not even a matter of want. It's a matter of need. <laughs> it's a matter of can. Like, let's be honest, <laughs> trying to be so specific on steps on four times speed is not the most fun part, but yeah. Yeah, now we have successfully run through the desert. Um, remember when we said Dark was great? Fun fact, now we are actually running in the one bird. Good thing it's the only one. And this bird is actually weak to dark. It's basically so, made for us. So it's Garuda, not Garuda from Final Fantasy XIV or Garuda from Final Fantasy X? That's Valfur. Close enough. There is uh, also a Garuda, but that's a normal enemy. Yeah, that's true. You see it after Blitzball, for example. Either way, uh, it gets it gets blown up really quickly here. We're going to go ahead and not save, but we're going to heal up. So we're going to patch up and keep moving. Just healing up. Could probably even have made it so as possible I didn't tank everything, but yeah. I mean, just being safe here, though. It's a marathon. So now we're Can't in these weird on. magic rooms. Can't, nah, I can't go wrong. We're Fight in these weird magic wrong. ruins because Ash like needs that. to, like, seek her destiny or something. Uh, here's Evil Wall. Yeah, so this is the first one. So this one's pretty evil. I think 30 HP or something. Yeah, this one's You do, like, evil. intense, like, reflect magic strats with arrow and cherry staffs. You could beat it. The OGP is to run does it, but... Together we can bring it down. In strong mode, we'd also do it. Except because we are level 90, and I know it's new game plus here. Um, six five five. Wait six a five five. So this enemy only has ten thousand HP. Holy smokes, Van! How did you die that quickly? That was actually incredible. Yeah, Van just got dusted. Um, <gasps> uh, I mean, I guess not what I wanted to see, but. Here we are. Make it work. It just means one might need shield less, need shield less for this dungeon. <laughs> uh, Balsia, Ash, no. I want you, you. Oops. That's what I want. Right. Even though we bought raised magic, we have not yet been trained in the use of raised magic, i.e. we did not buy the piece of paper that says we know the spell, so no one can cast it yet. Uh, so those circles on the ground, uh, those are traps. <laughs> they should not hit this hard. L let me just make it clear. They should not hit this hard. Because <laughs> usually, like, yeah, they just have too yeah. many party members. They are just not good in dodging those traps, even if you see them. Um, Traveler set up 130. 130. Got it. I wrote it down. Thank you. I'm helping. So yeah, we also pick... Like, this dungeon has some stuff. We only pick up the Dispel spell. There would also be the Vanish spell and the uh, Hiska mode. <sighs> Do I not know? I, I I can't really get the Hiska mode now anymore with where I set up Traveler. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but I also shouldn't need it, so it's fine. But yeah, we need to activate two, two switches in order to get to Belias. Uh, I, I mean, the big um, treasure that is in this place. Definitely not a demon. Nope. Definitely not. Um, yeah, right here would be the haste gun mode. Blah. Movement, please. That's right, we're on a step route on four times speed, everybody. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> this game... This game rules. <laughs> 
Only speedrunners can get the stump ideas. But yeah, um, so the next boss is Belias. Belias uses Pyraja at 50% HP. Heal, rip, barge. Uh, we actually need to revive him. That's at some point. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, at 50% HP, he uses Pyraja, and we don't survive Pyraja. It's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, Which we is die. Why we need Traveler. <laughs> we're, you know how we mentioned that we're underleveled? We're really underleveled. <laughs> Um, so we, at least our dear, dear, um, guest characters have given us a lot, a lot of Phoenix Downs. Well, we used all of them for Dastia? Yeah. Uh, Van Oh, wait, this is not the party I want. Uh, Van, go out. This is the party I want. We want a cool. high potion thrower. Um, now we do this on, this way. Uh, 120 or 130? Uh, 130. 130. Uh, why am I running forwards with Bar Belsia? Belsia is the one that's supposed to be in the back. Yeah, he's uh, a potion thrower. Yeah, and he is also the weakest link here. Okay, now we need to be like in a certain range. Yep, because we need to make sure that he does not, not survive too... this. He must yeah, die. Yeah, not too early, not too late. Because if we are too late, he uses Greater Barrier, which reduces the damage, and there we go. Bye Perfect. bye, Belias. Because, yeah, Belias has 16k, so. Somewhere between 35, uh, 63 and a half, and 50%, you want to throw it, or use it. Getting an elixir. And a rock. Yeah, and most importantly, we got a second job. And so, yeah. I'm gonna do doing some menuing now. Finally. Uh, it is menuing time. We're gonna teach people how to use things like white magic and armor and... Okay, well, you know, swords, I guess. <laughs> Black magic. Night. So yeah, as you explain, oh, we get some plaques. I have to admit, I don't think I can talk at menu users at the same time. Yep. So we're gonna make sure that we fill out some things here for our characters. We need gambit slots. Um, there are HP boosts in the night tree that are really, really handy for that. Um, we need to also unlock second jobs because that is a part of your first license board. There is a point in it that you can unlock to unlock your second job slot. Um, the whole idea here is that we want to make sure that we have a couple casters. We need a couple characters who are really tanky. It's why Bosch got the plus 340 health. Um, Mystic Armor is really handy as well because that starts giving us access to magic lore, which uh, just increases our magic damage. So Ash is going to play caster here. Needs a gambit slot as well. We're going to grab one of the cheap ones along the way. You know, we're going to grab a little bit of armor that we're not quite going to use because we just need that to get access to our second license board as well. Um, Ash is also going to get Bushi, which gives us yeah. access to other magic power increases and some decent armor as well. Um, man, there's a lot going on. These menus are extensive, by the way. This is yeah. the coolest uh, part uh, of the run if you're in to notice that, like, casually, you would probably want to, like, have as few overlap as possible. Here you want to have as max as possible. You can see the staves one there in the middle. Thanks to having yep. multiple um, jo two jobs, we are able to skip that. Yep. Also, we're finally uh. getting this golden amulet because that's what we've been waiting for for a long time. And we're going to equip it to Ash because she needs to get more magic later, so we need to make sure that uh, that she's okay with that. Uh, Balthier is going to get steel, which is handy. Uh, Bosch is now going to become our potion thrower because he's got a billion hit points to work with, which is great. And a third gambit slot. God, there's so much menuing here, but we're going to put him on to attacking when necessary. But that is not necessary right now. Well, this is what we want. So, yeah, we basically have, we'll have three characters. Um, we have Bosch, who is basically a knight. Just the melee and tank. And has Shikari simply because Shikari helps the most in getting HP loss just as efficient as possible. Then we have Penelo, who is a white mage. She she got bushy, but that's only because 
quite nature the bad first class and the second class is very far away. Um, and then we have Ash, who is both a melee and an uh, and a mage. She either uses black magic or she will be using um, katanas, which also scale with physical and magical powers. So as a mage, she has an advantage there. So she's going to carry this party. She is going to carry quite a bit, yes. She also needs, because of that, the most LP. Because she actually has two jobs to fulfill. Yep. Okay, and now we're doing the good old PS2 strat, because nothing nothing else works efficiently here. Um, so we got this Reflect Gamut, right? Yep, and we actually... It's interesting, and I didn't mention it, but you might have noticed if you were paying attention that we set up our Gambits that were targeting our spells to ourselves. Um, which normally would be a way to, you know, die in combat, which is bad, but the Reflect Gamut that we grabbed... Uh, instead, we're going to bounce a bunch of arrows onto these enemies that have auto-reflect already set up. Um, so yeah, one of the neat things is, Fossilat only targets Bash if you have Bash in your party. So which is why we gave Bash a lot of HP, <laughs> so that he can actually survive this, because as you saw, he took a lot of damage there. Yep. So yeah, but our gambits for reflecting magic worked out. Reflect mode spent, but Fossler is now, well, dead. But yeah, um, so yeah, a AoE spells on yourself, it basically means we've casted, like, arrows on all three of our characters, all three got reflected, and that way we got three arrow casts onto Vossler at the cost of one. That's, uh, just, which is, that's just value. Yeah, that is what the PS2 speedrun uses a lot, because um, it is just a lot of damage at once, but with speed up, like it isn't always worth. It usually isn't worth it because it takes a while to set up. Yeah, it's also why certain spells are really bad in the game in general, um, not because of the damage that they do, but because they have too long of an animation. Because you animation lock, uh, because this is an MMO, so there's going to be animation locks as well. Um, but uh... like a a big cast spell like Scourge that we're not going to see in the run. Uh, takes a while to cast. Uh, Fyra, uh, basically, or like Dark, or like even Fyraga goes off pretty much instantly. Yeah, also, what you could have seen is that I just unequipped and re equipped Bash a lot. So, what the thing is with, uh, in this game is that, like, let's say he threw a high potion, then usually he takes, like, I don't know, three seconds to use it. Obviously, he a lot faster. But uh, the bar, the ATP bar, will basically play for five seconds even though the animation has long happened. And in order to shorten that, you can just unequip and re-equip him in order to reset... Just reset his action, which has already happened, so nothing bad happens. Okay, now I really need to pay attention because I forgot to change my party members and I still have a var... I have a lot of characters that do bad stuff. Yes, yeah, so we need to fix that really quickly here before we explode. Um, yeah, so you are not going to do that. You are just... Uh, yeah, yeah, just don't. So yeah, this is the, uh, this is the LP farming portion of the run here. Or at least, you know, we're also going to do some gold waller here, because we're going to go grab some diamond armlets. Uh, the chests in the trial mode do respawn, so we're going to go ahead and dust off these as quickly as we can. Uh, Balthier's also stealing. I forget, what are you trying to grab here, if you can get it? We're just get. I mean, we are trying to get a lot of stuff, just for having more stuff. But also we can get some of these 3% steals, like the Kakata, which is an insanely strong weapon, um, like Berserker Braces, or ba later on back the Swine, and a Haste mode, and Balthier's gonna die, but we don't get too much. We also yeah. only do half as much because at the moment our strongest spell is arrow and this big bird over there absorbs arrow damage. So we're leaving. Um, yeah, we wanted, we, we basically just wanted the 6k kill for the next shopping. Yeah, but you get a little bit of it. You get a little bit of LP on Ash there too. Yeah, it's like still 80 LP. 50. Like the amount of LP you can get in trial mode is just insane. There are absurd amounts of license points to be had, but we want to make sure we get it ahead of time here. But now we're at the banks of the Sot because we are out here trying to find Ash's destiny or something. Yeah, it's like... 
I, I want to know what I want to do. Do you have any proof of your heritage? Well, no, but I'm cute. Also, I have this Dawn Shard. Yeah, that still doesn't say anything because apparently there was like I think that really proved it, except that we have like a boop Elias's ass, which also wasn't really as good more boss lab, but I mean look, Vossler did good work until he sold us out. Yeah. Okay, so, so con uh, considering we didn't get any Destia drops, we'll just unequip everyone to get rid of all the dump equipment that we don't want anyways. Oh, there's bad gear. Yeah. So it just floods our inventory. Which makes menuing hard, which is bad. Might as well just sell it. Uh... I, mean, we, I mean, we need the money, right? Yeah, we need some money. It's an RPG so, yeah. speedrun. You're chronically broke or, or, or gold glitching, and we don't have a gold glitch, so we're going to be chronically broke. Oh, well, we got a Windbreaker steal, so that's neat. And yeah, if you have any donations, I think now would be a good time. Absolutely. Um, we actually have a $1,000 donation um, from TMS LFT, so thank you so much. Um, their Thanks comment, new, new day, new game, new VTuber, good luck with the run, Kaguya Nikki. Here's to not letting Frozen Flygon off the hook for that bonus 11 exit run later. Thank you so very much. Yeah, and actually, I'd just like to mention that we, we have two incentives open for Super Mario World. Uh, if we raise $6,000, you will get to see Frozen Flygon complete a bonus 11 exit run following the Super Mario World All Castles run. It's a super incredible, and I would love to see it. And it looks like we're already on our way with that $1,000 donation. Thank you again. And we actually also have a bid war for save or ditch Yoshi. And you can choose whether Yoshi will be saved or ditched in Valley of Bowser during that run. And I also have a $25 donation here from Blueberry. No comment, but thank you so much for your donation. Thank you so much. So yeah, people have already been mentioning. So yeah, we have now bought Fyra and a flame staff. And we've already Which talked about how great trial mode is to grind. And we bought that fire staff because it increases the power of Fyra, which is which is fantastic in every way. Yeah, and now we just get exactly everything we could ever want for that grind to happen. Uh, so yeah. So we, we get, get Fyra, we get Flame Staff, and we get Hatsman and War Mage, which gives us a bunch of LP back uh, whenever we defeat enemies and deal magic yep. damage. Yeah, and the idea is that we go back and forth between Bushi and Black Mage so that we can skip a couple of nodes along the way and be LP efficient, use those LP that we got. Uh, we have the Dawn Shard, uh. which is going to be equipped to, uh, which is going to be equipped as well. Uh, Dawn Shard is a Nethysite, which is an item in this world that absorbs magic, so it sets your MP to zero, but usually does something really cool as well. Um, yeah, it gives you it gives you match defense, but most importantly, it's actually required for Bash to have for the story at some point, anyways. So might as well give it to him here because Bash is not gonna cast a spell ever in his life. <laughs> Bash doesn't even know what magic is. <laughs> Bash doesn't need to know what magic is. Yeah, he's got hit points and also hit points. Bash is not a good mage, but Bash is a really good <laughs> melee. He is a meat shield. He is gonna be. He's gonna be big and beefy this entire run. Uh, cool. We're back. Let's get six thousand more gil. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll be here for a while now. Um, so yeah, we'll basically get almost all of the LP we'll need for the rest of the run here now. Um, for what it's kind of important, floor three, the one that has the kakata, but sadly, what is more important, it also has this hidden boss, which gives eighteen LP every time you beat it. With Which Golden for... Amulet, 36. You just cannot not get it. <laughs> Especially if we go here five times. Like, we suddenly talking about like 90, 180 um, LP. Also, this neck bat here, this bird, um, absorbs fire damage. So we need to be a bit careful here. But there's also chest with a bubble mode. Bubble, really... neat little status effect. 
doubles the max HP. We will be using it for a bit. Uh, yeah. Double HP is important when you're double HP is important when you're under leveled. It also gives you immunity to the disease status. Not that that's as much of a concern in the speed run. We, it, speed we, it's still something to look out for in one of the fights. Yeah. This is true. But... Disease status is super annoying because it what it does is it reduces your maximum HP. So as you take damage, it's it's dealt against your maximum hit points instead of your your actual hit points. Um, this of course is very bad because you also can't be resurrected out of disease status very easily because you'll go to one hit point. Uh, so it can be very frightening for casual runs. Oh yeah, for sure. It's also very annoying to get rid of because the Zerums are not easy. Is it serum? Is this? It is serums, yeah. Yeah, it's and not that easy to get. It's pretty late, and it's remedy laws two or three, like also something you need to really work hard for. Yep, or the other side of it, you can. There is a spell that lets you spell just disease in the game. Um, it is hidden in an area later in the game, and you will possibly miss it because it's a chest that does not spawn 100% of the time. Sounds amazing. This game is great. This. Game yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time when we were also going for twenty percent chest. We have oh, rooted was... that out. Which chest was that? Uh, it was a Kikuichi Monji and was foreign oh. highlands. Got it. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, it was really nice to go there. It has a really amazing cutscene that I would have loved to show off because it would have been like Demon Chocobo all over again. <laughs> Like, you are literally going into a cutscene with Wedge and, uh, and Bakes, and one of them is telling you that they are afraid of chocobos, and I at least always went with my, not just with my chocobo, but also activated the turbo, which meant that the chocobo gets glowing eyes and just glows completely. <laughs> it's great. So, it was completely okay to be afraid of that. <laughs> Cool. We've done some traveling. There's a cutscene. There's some judges. They're scary and have cool helmets. Yeah. That was probably Bergen. We hate him. I don't know. Most of the judges here just don't even see much. Like, yeah, we boop the ass of some of them, but <laughs> <laughs> we we do we do beat them all down basically, um, except yeah. for Gabranth, who, well, you know, pot spoilers. I, I, hopefully, also. <laughs> <laughs> Plot spoilers, we don't get to kick his butt. We don't. I didn't pay attention where my MP was. Well, usually we should be able to make three times happen, so. Yep. So here's I was Garrett actually Village. doing it this way so I could re would be able to refill after two, but. Yeah. For that, I would have had to pay attention. But yeah, you, usually you can just do three times and then you're fine. And then be okay. Yep. But there's Arrowit Village, home of Fran and the Viera, um, who are all bunnies and they're all women because the men are cast out i guess it's weird uh, yeah uh, male Viera a... exist probably in another village that we cannot go to i mean ff14 yes. has told us that male Vieras exist yeah they're real they're actually in the game now so so yeah malvieras are very real it's just they don't we don't see their towns or anything so how oh many nice you? ash is slowed now that's gonna be fun uh, oh this is bad because that means everyone else gets their attacks off first, but Fran doesn't even have enough MP. Oh, there was enough for one dark, which is already gone again. Oh, got some gold needles at least. Yeah, Yay. but I just around. Oh yeah, also one of the neat things, slow runs out at some time. Um, slow, poison, and in theory also stop, but you don't really want to be inflicted with stop, just run out over time. 71. That's actually pretty good on, on MP right now. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Yes, it was because she was slowed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Eroid Village. Only notable thing is the haste chest in the back, I guess, which it's just sadly not worse. And Time Age is 
Uh, at least for speed run pur purposes, the worst class, and it's the only class I have not been able to make work in any of the speed runs I have done. Yeah, it doesn't or get a lot it. of it doesn't get a lot of damage output, and it doesn't get a lot of tankiness. Um, support magic in Final Fantasy games that isn't like protect or other direct direct support, notoriously bad in this one. Um, by shielded armor, mage's habit, demon's bane, isuna, and some status effect healing. But yeah. So we yeah, grab I think there is one category in which is it is actually useful or used, which is OOA no um PS for any percent plat percent. So I guess it is time that we can talk about the meme bow. Do you know the meme bow? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> so the meme bow, aka Zeitengrad, is the official name. Um you know, developers just always have the thing to just make really meme insane weapons and are like, yeah, we'll just put them into a very, very rare chance to get. Like, we are talking about 1% chance to spawn, 1% chance to get. Which makes like 1 in 10,000. The problem is, you know what speedrunners do when they, when they encounter such things. They find a way to get their hands on it. They find a way to manipulate it. Yes, at least that is the case in the PS4 version because of how RNG works. In the PC version, you can only do it by reading consistently, at least by reading RNG values with outside programs, which is not allowed. Um, and as soon as someone would do a run with it, you would, pro we would probably just split the lead up. But anyways, uh, because the meme, the Zeitengrad is massively broken. And when I say massively, I mean absolutely massively. You don't need, to need any license for it. It is has insane speed to like, fire it is a ranged weapon like hits for massive amounts of damage it's just overall insane and basically plays the game by itself but we're not here for that nope we are here for like actual normal speed running a measure of skill in your ability to traverse the world of Final Fantasy XII. Yep. Like, we are not only fast, we are like... Like, we have four times speed and we have chocobo boost. <laughs> <laughs> in case four times speed wasn't fast enough yet. <laughs> chocobo overdrive. I was gonna say, I got so used to the movement, the speed movement on its own, and then suddenly you got on the chocobo and it was <laughs> extreme movement. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot follow. I don't know how you're doing it. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it is some practice, plus the nice part that at least most of the areas you run with the Chocobo are straight. Not all of them. We'll have some later on. I think you're being humble. I think it's amazing. Uh -huh. But yeah, um, we should have enough uh, bubble modes by now. I have not checked, but yeah. The hidden boss in the third floor also drops bubble modes usual as normal drops, so picked up lots yeah. of those. Top of reverse modes, which we will yeah, probably just use one because we can, and rare haste modes, but they just never happen. All right. And I'll, yeah, I'll just leave all of you the floor because I have a, a... We've just gotten, like, 131 times 5 LP. Double that if you are Ash. Uh, wait. I, I, I need to menu a bit. <laughs> we need to use those LP. Yep, so we gotta get off the choke over first. You're not allowed to menu on a bird for some reason. Um. I also need to wait for the heal because I cannot change my party before before that. Yes, because if an action is being taken against uh, onto a party member or by a party member, it cannot be affected. Uh, Bosch is going to get a bunch of battle lore here because we need him to hit harder. Um, he's also going to get, I believe he's their carrier for the Shielded Mail and the Demon's Bane. Yep. Uh, but Shielded yeah. Mail has innate protect, so he will always have the protect status, making him exceedingly beefy against physical attacks, which is fantastic in every way, for a while at least. 
Yeah, the shielded armor is just pretty OP for this point. Just the bonus protect for absolutely no reason. It's real good. But yeah, also going out of the way for like, since we didn't get the Kakata, uh, we'll get the Ninja Sword instead. That costs a lot of points, but fortunately that's basically really all we're ever going to use points for on Vash. And we are going to get focus. So when his HP is at 100%, he'll hit harder as well. Ash, as you can see, has 1,347 LP to play with here. Uh, just an absolute pile of it. Um, Serenity is great. Serenity is the same concept. It increases the output when HP is at 100%. Um, we are going to grab Katana. I believe that's... Uh, do you get the Amina Murakame in this run? Uh, yep. Also the Yake. Both level 4 yep. ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep. Also, lots of grab... HP. Lots of HP because why should we not get HP swiftness when it's free? Uh... Yep, dying is bad. Dying is bad. Health stops that. Swiftness is good because it makes us go faster. Uh, it reduces our, basically reduces the time for the ATB bar to char charge up, which is fantastic. Mm, um, yeah. What's that bubble ring that you grabbed the? No, slot that for? is Sage's ring and Berserker braces, oh, which right. are very important. Yep, and we're going to grab Black Magic 14, which is Fyraga. I do remember that one. Nine, but yeah. <laughs> well, nine, 14. I'm good at numbers. I'm really... I'm just... Maybe we'll ask GDQ to fix that one in post. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> if we have any donations, though, now is a yeah, great please. time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, please bail me out of talking about menu anyway. <laughs> you got it. We got tons of donations coming in. Um, from another one from Blueberry, uh, with another $25 saying, hoping everyone has a fantastic run. Go Kaguya. And I also have a $25 donation from uh, Zed or Z. I'll pronounce both. It says, you're doing great. Have a great Monday, everyone. Love the cause you're playing for. And... It's on topic. Uh, Char Bunny donates ten dollars. A village of bunnies, you say? A plus game. Also donating towards cardboard as the pod choice for near because bunnies munch on cardboard. Thank you so much, everyone. So generous. It's amazing. Yep. Here's Pinello getting loaded up with white magic now as well. So we're now in the white mage tree. Um, yeah, that's actually the latest change in the route because else you would go like from accessories one, which you can see all the way up, simply because you like kind of had to um, to have a white mage over uh, during the race wall section with Belias. But yeah, we now just use the high potions in order to just skip all the annoying, annoying menus. Yep, and then we use Bushi to open up access to the upper left corner of the white mage tree without having to go through literally anything. So we just get access to what we want. Don't have to worry about all these things in between that we don't want. Um, right. We did not want to do that. We want to do that. Campets. So the big thing with this gambit in particular for the new Kai Sand is that new Kai Sand, I believe it removes um, stop and slow. Uh, <sighs> confusion. I confusion. I don't remember all of the items, right? Um, the game will only use them if it is legal to use it, i.e. if something is confused. So uh, we don't need to worry about like how we're targeting it. We just have it if an ally is confused that we set it up because obviously that's really bad. Um, we're going to set up some Cura. We're going to set up a Dispel. Um, we're going to set up a Dispel uh, Gambit for Pinello. Pinello with the White Magic now has a lot of things that she can do. So the idea is that now she is going to have to do a lot of things here uh, going forward. So she gets six Gambit slots. You know, your physical attackers only need like three or four at most for most of the run. Right. Now that that's finally out of the way, we can play the game again and grind a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise it's going to be fun and quicker. It's going to be uh, fun and interactive. But yeah, for, for now we'll just do the old strat of running through and let 
just ash murder bats on the way because i mean we have grinded a bit we have fire and a flame staff these bats are getting one shot oh i'm silly i should have known chronos tears are what clear stop and slow because it's literally the time item <laughs> correct <sighs> Great. Yeah. I'm well, well New Kai Sands also in IZ well in the IZGS translation at least were called yep. smelling salts. Ah, uh, that would one make of more the sense. one of the things that got not that intuitive retranslations. Alarm clocks also turned into princess kisses. Oh, uh, that doesn't make any sense at all because that should clear that should clear frog, which is not a status in this game. It, it clears sleep. <sighs> yeah. What? Lassa Lars actually is... died. Well, Lars, lots of... Lars, Lars is another guest character in the party who we, I guess we care about? I mean, Lars is a, is a healer as well. Yeah, Can't have good. too many healers, right? Never. So we're so, going to yeah. hit some, we're going to hit some switches here. Look, it's jellies. It's time. Uh, we're going to use flamethrower on jellies because it's super effective. Um, we're going to get some items and we're going to get some experience, but mostly we're going to get some later drops later on. Unless it's been routed out. Has it been routed out? No, 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 no. So jellies drop a lot of stuff. Jellies drop water magicides and yellow liquids. Yellow liquids are really good for money. Like one sells for 532 kill. So then we have uh, the next rare drop is teleport stones, which we were talking about earlier. We will need four teleport stones. Um, just to tra traverse through the through the map and please chain level three. Um, and the last one is a float mode. Float mode, well, gives us float, which is we need two of those: one for a boss and one for a corridor, which is just filled with traps. And we really would like to not having to like care about those traps. Oh right, that's when we have to go into the necro hall, isn't it? No, no, not necro hall, but it's almost as bad as it's a necro hall. <laughs> There's an optional dungeon in the game, uh, the Necrohall of Nabudis, which is awful in every way. Um, but also, you know, you mentioned that there was that needle trap before that killed the party. Imagine if it was like literally that, but every step. Um, also didn't talk about chain level, but there's some, finally some teleport stones. Uh, talking about chain level real quick. Uh, what ends up happening is that in this game in particular is that if you kill the same enemy uh, in sequence, like not the same enemy class or anything, but the same enemy over and over again, you get a chain level. You see a number start counting up on the uh, lower right of the screen. Uh, the higher the chain level is for a given enemy, the better the drops you get. You'll see that Nikki has been picking up like three teleport stones or two vials of yellow liquid as opposed to one. Um, and also the rare items drop more often. You can see that the chain's at 42 and the, the item drops are now gold, which is where we want to be. Uh, because now we get tons upon tons upon tons of stuff which we're going to convert into money or well in the case of teleport stones used to do the teleportation that we need to do in this run yeah so basically if you if you pick up stuff sometimes it counts sometimes it doesn't i think the general consensus is if the number flashes it wouldn't count it might also not count if you're confused and actually accidentally pick one up uh, but basically, if you don't pick one up for 7 to 10 drops, the number's random, you will get a chain level increase. And chain level increases just makes the rarer drops more common, and that's what we're looking for. I have not seen a single float mode yet, and if that doesn't happen, then I will just do another one. Because I cannot be oh, bothered to go without a float mode. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I can handle one, all right, but... Yeah, okay. there's a boss that there's a boss that has quake, and without the float moat, you die. I mean, you could maybe. Ma I've just not tried it. Like quake is not the strongest, and it quote unquote only inflicts slow. But I have not done that in ages, and I mean, getting more money would also not be the worst. Just being no, honest here. Yeah, maybe finding out is not the thing we're gonna do today. Like yeah, I w I would like to see some exceptional RNG because that's always fun for a marathon, but. Um, I don't need to wall well, myself got you got deliberately. One. Well, we got one. I guess that's the life we're living now. <laughs> Do we live here now? Also, the other nice thing about that is it does give us a few more levels, which isn't the worst thing, because it does increase our base stats and our base HP, which is handy. All right, some last final licenses, because we still want Isuna on Panello, because Isuna is nice. 
And while we're at it, I mean, some HP. Can't go wrong with that. Right? Because more survivability, just because we are lacking armor, potentially. So yeah, Isuna. And now that Ash has finally gotten, like, so much stuff. Uh, wait, you just get the golden amulet. Vanilla is allowed to get the golden amulet. Sands to... Nope. Vanello. Echo herbs. Attack on. UL2. Wait. U2... Is sooner on and on. I said on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Pinello is still pure support, but we've added Dispel and Asuna to the support suite. Um, Dispel is super important for removing positive buffs from enemies because you'll note that enemies do love to buff themselves. Here's Tiamat. Yeah, uh, who is so this one is immobilized, so it's not fun. I mean, it, it's, it works. Tiamat is mostly a meat shield doesn't deal that much damage, especially after all the grinding we've done. Yeah. Tiamat is a big pile of hit points. Um, cast some basic magic. Not super exciting. Breath is meh. Rake is near nothing on Bosch, so... Yeah. Well, we also didn't mention yet what you might have seen. Um, actually, at some point, they patched the, uh, the game that every character has three, like, pages of gambits that you can use. So basically for Ash, that means we'll just have one melee and one mage, uh, mage page and just go back and forth with L2 and R2. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, that was like added, I don't know, a year in after the release of the PC, <laughs> PC version. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think when the Switch version came out. Oh. It was like really late. So we get Lente's tier, an item that I'm sure that gets explained in a cutscene someplace along the line that we didn't watch. Yeah, Lente's tier is... So basically, in this jungle, we would be um, blocked by the doors. But we don't even... Like, yeah, which we obviously knew, so we don't even try running through them. And Lente's tier is just the item here that allows us to run through this. So we we're sadly not OP anymore, so we'll just run through instead. <laughs> yep, so that we can exit through the outside, the other side of the Goldmore jungle, and move on with our plot. Yeah, usually they would want us to go right the side next to the village, but there is Elder Worm, and we really don't want to fight Elder Worm. <laughs> Elder Worm is a pain. Yeah, we're dodging that trap by going to the right. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, Elder Worm is Elder Worm at fifty is like really really annoying and most annoyingly at 50 percent it uses like an attack like an animation attack that inflicts like all kinds of statuses it's just no it gives you around a, a chest with like 10k gil but that's not worth it for us we, ju we just run around yep so now we're in the frozen waste behind the jungle we're in the mountains now we've entered the snow biome Yep, and it's time to find out how much money we have. Because it'll be time for more shopping soon. Yeah, I, I mean, the shopping is optional, but I still, because the item itself isn't necessary, but it's nice for safety and it tells me how much money I have already. Um, which is just really nice because the upcoming parts is where I can easily pick up extra stuff. All right, so 62 yellow liquids. Yeah. No, we good. We're just good. I mean, we also did one extra room, so we better be good. But yeah, we good. Yeah. We got exactly what we want. To grabbing not having Alamias. to care about anything anymore. I'm grabbing a Lamia's Tierra for a little bit more defense and half magic, half, dam half damage from ice magic in particular. Yeah, Penelo was still running around with a cotton hat, uh, which could be fine, but it depends how you want to fight Matthias later on. Um, we'll get there later. But yeah, just having more defense, as I said, I like it. 
Makes things Keeping. safer, and I know that, like, most importantly for me, just, it's the money. If you only, if you skip it, then you chop next, like, in phone calls, and then all you can do is fight enemies and pick up their drops, which is obviously more random. Yep. So we leave Larsa at the monastery here on the mountain. We done with grinding. We don't need him anymore. He did a good job. He was helpful. Yeah. Doesn't have Traveler. He would have Shades of Black, I believe, which casts a random black magic spell and Bubble. Which, yeah. I mean, yeah, we don't need to double our HP at that point. <laughs> also, it's pretty expensive. It's just like 32 MP. So, uh, did I do it? Whatever. We'll just do it again. Yeah. We want to teleport back to here, so we really need to trigger that teleport crystal. Yep. Gotta grab a chocobo, though, because we gotta go places. We gotta go there fast. Zoomy zoom, like... I think Final this is the true reason people you, you can get used to four times speed, is because this exists. <laughs> yep. Final Fantasy Thirteen does ask us the important question of, do you think you could ride this chocobo? But we're doing it in Final <laughs> Fantasy Twelve. <XII. laughs> yeah, sadly no chocobo music in this game. No, the music in this game is so good, though. Yeah, it is. Same composers that did uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, among other games. Uh, Sakamoto and Iwata. Two very good composers. Done a lot of good work. Now we head into the Soul Shrine. Because... Yeah, our fate leads us there. I actually... One of the problems when you always skip cutscenes. You really don't know that much about the story. Yeah, like, it's always just really interesting to me, because in Final Fantasy XII in particular, right, like, in most Final Fantasy games, right, the big overarching plot is, you know, kill whatever god figure is there and save the world, right? We're not really strictly here to save the world, right? We're just kind of mostly here to, like, help Ash find her destiny. We are kind of thrown into this plot, like, into a string of plot, then we play through that, and then the plot is over. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there is some backstory with, like, her former fiancé of the kingdom that has been destroyed. Uh, but yeah. Who kind of looks a bit like Van, I believe, but it doesn't really matter. It's not like there is actually ever anything between them, except, like, maybe good friends. Yeah, but all of these ruins that we're going into, like, find Ash's, uh, find Ash's destiny are full of, you know, neat moving floors and things. And also, we don't talk to the green save point there because it's actually a mimic save point. Surprise, yeah. Surprise. Sadly, we also it... didn't get one of the insanely rare chests there. Rare chests, that, like, two chests that have, like, also, like, rare, rare spawn and rarely have hit what you need. Uh, but one of those chests can drop 50,000 kills. Which fixes all of your gill problems, if you have any at this point. Yeah, there is the old ICGS magic root, which actually, like, didn't need as much LP and was like, yeah, we just manipulate that chest because manipulation works in this version. Uh, but yeah, we don't have that. We've got our money otherwise. We just... Yeah, we have to get run our money in our we have to get our money the honest way by forging diamond armlet. <laughs> forging diamond armlets and killing jellies, yeah. So yeah. Selling there cubic zirconia the ruby ring. Yep, we're not gonna get that either, of course. <laughs> oh great! So this is what we love to see. So we have to turn turn over three statues. Okay, we need to run back and forth. I said back and forth. Um, yes, I need to face a certain direction, and if you're unlucky, you need to turn them twice because they're showing you their back. Mm -hmm. We have three of them. I apparently got too lucky recently. <laughs> yeah, I gotta save some of the luck for the marathon. Can't use it up in practice. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to show bad RNG off, but not that. That's boring. Come on, game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and since we didn't get the Kakata, we will get now a Ninja Sword, the Ashura, for which we have to take a small detour. Do not step over the trap. 
Um, sometimes the traps are okay. Sometimes they're like healing traps and things, but we're yeah, not gonna... Yeah, but no, no, we would, I would tell you if that was the healing traps, and I would run over it. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll probably kill us. Not kill, but deal decent damage. I mean, we are running around through, around so much that... Yeah. So, yeah, counterclockwise. That's ironically the direction I usually have to turn. Even though you would think it's random. Oh, no, real randomness doesn't exist. Only observer bias. Um, yeah, also, you optimize, you flame staff. All right, time for Venus Gun. The boss was a very great gimmick. <laughs> well, if the boss was actually any strong, it probably would maybe even matter. But yeah, um, our characters get slowed for um, metallic equipment. Which, yeah, we have a shielded armor, but look at these big spikes. Those are fire casts. Um, yes. So, yeah, what is that? Weak against fire, fire staff? No, not even weak At against fire. Jeez. It's just Ash not that strong. It's just not that strong, and Ash has, like, Serenity and, like, 18 instances of magic lore or something. It's not 18, but it's, you know. It's a few, yeah. Like, by, now it's like, by now, it's like six or seven. That's a mana font trap for a bit of MP. That was actually not a lot. Okay, we need to switch um, Ash back. Wrong, di wrong direction. I do not want to throw potions with her. <laughs> yeah, she's not here to throw potions. She's here to do damage. Yep. Especially because we've definitely gotten a couple potions along the way, so they would definitely be in the inventory clogging things up, even though we sold a batch of them earlier. <laughs> Yeah, also, we probably got, I want to say, the most important item of the run. Actually, oh. the Sage's Ring. Ah. Because the Sage's Ring is an equipment that halves our MP, the MP cost of a character. Now, you can imagine later on, we will get Kiraja, which costs like 58 MP or something ridiculous. You really want to half that cost. You really want to half that cost. Yeah, especially because, you know, Ash has all these cool things that, like, regenerate mana on spellcast and on kill, and she's fighting things and it rules. Uh, Pinello gets none of that, because Pinello is a white mage and is here to do literally zero damage for most of this run. Yeah, it's actually not worth it to give her attack. It just keeps her from it's... healing. Yep, it just or stops her from doing... It stops her from casting support magic, and that's what's important here. Here's Ice Azers. Yeah. And here is why I want to have the Lamy Tiara, because Ice Azers allowed to put people to sleep, and what I'm doing against that is literally run into Mateus so that Mateus attacks Penelo and wakes her up. Yo, wake me up. Thanks. Back to cast your magic. Back to and if I wouldn't have the Lamy Tiara, we would probably try and go, oh my goodness, I should have run away more. Uh, time out, time out, time. I... Want to take that trap? Thank you very much. Uh, right before, right before the big cast goes off. Um, I don't. I, I mean, so, but uh, especially like uh, summons have a high rooms have a high concentration of mist. So just by running around, we get a lot of MP. But uh, just Alexa, it's fine. We'll also pick up that Alexa. Wow, I really expected Bash to die there. But yeah, hit that trap just in time to not get uh, killed by Blizzaja. Um, everything's yeah. fine and good, though. Nothing well, like nothing ever went wrong there. We'll pick that up. Um, in, my, in my son, I would have picked it up anyways. In a, speed, in, in a PB attempt, I would probably have tried to skip it. I mean, not after I've used this one out, but in general. Because, uh, spoken like, yeah. Yeah, spoken like a real speedrunner, right? It's a three-hour run. Yeah, but if I skip that elixir, it's a two-hour, 59-minute, and 55-second speedrun. You know, the thing is, with four times speed, like, five seconds is a lot. <laughs> it is. <I> mean... <laughs> and, yeah, the, ba the sad part is, like, on you would think on the way back, you can just shorten the distance. Yeah, but on the way back, there's chests here in here at despawned. 
Because he has a chest as a bubble mode, so we don't really care about that one. Yeah, we got plenty of those at this point, because we farmed up a bunch right. of them earlier. Yeah. Right, yeah. I would think if you have some donations, now would be a good time. Absolutely. Um, I have a $10 donation from Jadles89 saying Samurassi and Kaguya Nikki are awesome. So thank you so much, Jadles. Thanks a lot. And another $10 donation from Toothball saying thanks for playing. And time for one more. Yeah. Valan donates $25. Glad to see others are as amazed by the speed Nikki plays at as I am. Go, Nikki, you got this. Okay, going back. Um, you are to you. Oh, there was no reason to forget that yet, but yeah. So yeah, switching back to magic. Um, yeah, as we've ma mentioned, we have Serenity on on Ash, which basically means she deals more damage if she has full HP. So we now give Penelo a gambit that says whenever Ash has taken damage, heal her. No questions asked. Just just throw your MP at her. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yep. Just throw your MP at her. Um, so they found out that Larsa was here. Larsa, of course, is part of, like, you know, the Imperial family or something. He's, like, super important, so they came to the monastery and attack. He is, like, the little, bro the little brother of the big bad guy. All oh, right. But it's a friendly little brother. He's, he's, he's the cool little brother who, like, actually hates oppression. Yeah. Now we have one of these other judges who just... De de decide to make like some kind of problems uh, yeah judges are a bit annoying for our mages because they actually can't block magic okay let's see so the Ashura is nice in the way that it has a 10% chance to just inflict that blind on hit well mm -hmm. it triggered in the last second well, that was helpful <laughs> that, that's always great uh, but, uh, yeah. but yeah he didn't seem to have blocked anything he died really really fast yeah, that was Judge Bergen. We hate him. Yeah, he was once deemed difficult, but with the Avenger and also was using Fire, Fire. Like, remember when we are reflecting f magic, and we now here we are like, we don't need to reflect magic. It's just really powerful on its own. <laughs> just, just blow him up. It's fine. Just go right at it. Yeah, it's like, why even bother? And yeah, now it's time to go here, um, where the famous Kikuichi Monji that we are talking about is, plus one, uh, two other items of which we'll only get one. Because um, we don't need the Thieves' Caps for increased steel, because we've already done trial mode and don't need to steal anymore. Yep. But yeah, we so really, 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 really want to get this item. Berserker bracelets! Yep, which... It's just an item that gives a character Berserk, uh, which is neat. If you can imagine, like Ash, we always need to go back and forth with the Gambits. Now we can just... Well, if she's Berserk, she will always automatically attack. So her Gambits don't matter anymore. So basically, if we want to turn her from a mage to a melee, we can just equip Berserker Braces and be done with it. Uh, plus some other really, really nice features that Berserk has that we will get into later on. All right, but now just running through, looking for an 80% elixir chest that I've only recently discovered, but it has not let me down in runs yet. There you go, GG. Always nice to have a backup, and it's so close. Yeah, it's like there. You're not going to try to, like, re-roll it, but Like, hey. co compared to the chest in Matthias' room, I will take that every time. <laughs> even if I, at 80%. Probably even at 50. 80% of the time, it works every time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, now we enter Salika Woods. Uh, if you go here casually, you can go here a lot earlier. You can also, like, 
try and fight King Bomb for some reason, but that's a, a tall task. And then go to like the Necro Hole of Nabutis and Nebria's Deadlands and just throw yourself into like enemies for which you should be level 70 or something. Or now that we have actually like beaten Bergen, we can unlock this quest here. Oh, so I should turn yep. off this. Um, so in order to actually we... uh, progress the story, because otherwise this would be where we would be blocked. Yeah, so we've got to find the nine Moogles who are, uh, they're on break. They're big chillin'. It says that they're layabouts, but, you know, they've actually formed a union and they actually are still on, you know, their union sanctioned 60 minute lunch break. So we really shouldn't be interrupting them and we're terrible, but, you know, we got to get places, I guess. So we figure it out. Yeah. Sorry, but we need this gate to open in order to go through because there is just no other way. There's still four of us out there. Yeah. They are very far apart. <laughs> very, very far. But yeah, just... Neat little ways in which developers decide to, like, have an open world, but open it up step by step. Mm -hmm. Like, the amount of stuff you could explore already while being blocked by that gate is insane. The Necrol of Nabidis is actually a place where you get a couple of very powerful magic spells in the in the casual playthrough. Yeah, uh, and very big heavy armor in the hidden shop even. Yep. Yeah. But that's where you go to get Protectga. You I believe you get Scourge there as well. Uh the last two heavy armors that you can buy are there. Yeah, it's level eleven or level twelve. I don't don't remember. Mage Power Shishak. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that bomb, like the no, king, king bomb, uh, the bomb boss on the way there is pretty annoying, and it casts renew. Over. The last time I tried to fight it, it's like a kind of low-level party. It was just casting renew over and over. <laughs> renew like, in this game, by the way. I just, can't just kill heals you, you, but you can't kill me. Ha ha. Yeah, renew. By the way, is just a spell that just heals you to one hundred percent of your health. Period. No questions asked. So we needed nine moogles to fix this gate because they're tiny and adorable. And, and not very really good, at, really good at, um, what's the word? Engineering. Engineering, right. Because that's how they are in Ivalice. So yeah, I would say if you have any donations, now would be a good time. We're just running around here. Absolutely. Um, Miji donates $10, says, First time watching Frost Fatals, and I'm having a great time. Had to donate to the Near Incentive to have our favorite sassy book follow our favorite sassy androids around. And we do actually have a bid war open for Near Automata. You get to decide the skin of the companion pod during the run. Your choices for the bid war currently are Cardboard, Grimoire Weiss, or Retro Red. And taking a look right now, it looks like Grimoire Weiss is up ahead with $50, with Cardboard following at $10. So if you have a preference, get your donations in now. Thank you very much. All right, and now we get to stock up a bit. Bacchus' wine, some Kronos tears. Why do I only have, like, so few Enkai Sands? Jeez, I'm not used to that. Um, Echo Herbs and Fyraga. So, Demi, we got a donation earlier. Do you remember what it said? I remember Fyraga being important. <laughs> is, it, is this it? Is this the Fyraga? So this is the Fyraga. All right, we did it. <laughs> the next boss is the Fyra instead of Fyraga makes them quite a bit more difficult in instantly. You wouldn't believe it. But yeah, just head he heading fast again. Um, aiming for that bridge because you don't want to try aim at that with full speed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tried that. 
Then they yeah. Doesn't work good. No. You'll run a lot into the river. Well, not really. But the Chocobo will try and fail. I guess this counts as a hunt, right? This weird kid tells us yeah, about a thing yeah, that we need to uh, fight. This is a, like half hunt. It doesn't really, yeah, we, we can't just burn those two. We should need to, but also won't hurt to do so. Then again, the, the real nice enemies are actually more inside here. So yeah, there was a time where we were really grinding a lot here in order to make levels, which it is a good place to grind levels, especially with Faraga. Uh, but we have found ways to... The biggest reason was the boss later on that was kind of damage check, but we have found ways to manage that damage check without just barely making it with levels. All right, and now it's time for these fun little... Prenders. They're terrible. They're terrible. We hate them. They are super consistent, so, um, I wish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. You're hoping they all run together. Basically, there are five Mandragoras of no, some what, what variety. No, what you hope is that Bash is able to properly tank everything. And yeah, Ash is well, just standing in the back and can burn do, things from the back. Basically like that. That, that was actually, pretty okay. That was a pretty solid, was a pretty solid Mandragora uh, queen fight. Mandragora and friends? I don't know. Can I imagine Maybe how we... this emote that I see in chat looks adorable and I love it? We're gonna grab that haste emote because that's important. It is. This game has five haste gamo chests, which we can grab once each. We skipped one of them in Race Wall, but the other four really want for bosses that... Even though it probably doesn't do a lot anymore, but it still does significant enough things that yeah sid 2 is a jerk uh, so 2 is probably not even the biggest jerk but it also really helps just skipping an animation attack hopefully um, and have you always seen a his good jack thing. have you seen his jacket it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to dr sid's fashion sense later though we're not there yet <laughs> Yeah, we are on our way, but... Oh, yeah, that reminds me I don't have a second float mode, right? Uh... No, you only have one. But Penelo still has MP, which is pretty amazing. That just shows how good Mendy's was. We might make it without using an elixir on Ariman, which I don't know when that happens the last time. I don't know if I've ever seen you have a run where you, have, where you haven't had to throw one. Yeah, sometimes you even have to throw two. Well, I, we'll see. Gonna do some annoying things like cast Toxin and cast Divide and cast Thundara and cast Immobilize Ga and yeah yeah We're fortunately grab an extra elixir. <laughs> yeah it will also split up into multiple clones and Ash is like yeah have you heard from Firaga this is an AOE spell I only care a bit about clones um so much about that Ash why did you run Vanilla why did you run out of MP. Um, apparently I was too happy. Nope, he wants a flame staff back. Yep. Phoenix oh, so down. Take a... Oh, wait. You use an elixir. So, yeah, just resetting in order to get off, any... get off stuff quicker. And now uh, it's fine. Yep, Penelo gonna do support things here real quick. That was going well right up until it wasn't, as fights sometimes do in this game, where just all of a sudden you get hit by a volley of spells and things go from great to really bad. Yeah, and now since we don't have a float mode, we need to, um, instead of just casually fighting through this quickly and getting some nice experience, you can see how many traps he there are in here. He it's just... Also getting the bangle so that we can actually see them. Yep. Oh, because there's this is a lot there, of traps, there, and I, there, I swear, if we don't have a float mode, we'll probably run into every single one of them. 
Yep, float um, gives you the ability to, uh, float does give you the ability to float off the ground, which of course gives you immunity to earth elemental spells, but also gives you immunity to overworld, to overworld traps, which is super, super, super important in certain part, parts of the game. Okay, just getting this back and these two friendos back. And now we can move on to Mini Game City. Usually There's called of, Arcades. There's a lot of cool things you can do in here. Arcades, of course, is the seat of the Empire. This is where the just hang out. Um, you know, obviously, since this is a RPG, of course, it's the, this is the city with big social stratification. You know, rich people live on top of the city and the poor people live down below. And, you know, we're going to foment some revolution because that's what we're all about. Yeah, but like every big city, we also have slums. And of obviously course. the hidden, the, 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 the hidden, like, tunnel didn't give a, bring us directly into it. Uh, I, d I did talk to that guy, right? Probably. Hopefully. The guy that talks yeah. about the bag point, absolutely. Somewhere was muscle memory. Um, yep. So but we yeah, to get so in. we first need to get into the big town. Um, we are very, very aristocratic here. Yeah, so they check for your papers because they're terrible people, and then you're like, I don't have anything. And they're like, well, just get out of here. They so obviously can't. like, you ain't gonna get, go, get get to see my papers. Not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, Balthier's, pa Balthier's papers say, I am a sky pirate and a thief, and uh, that would be bad. Um, I, don't, I don't want my old man to know that I am here. <laughs> yep, also important is that the guards also don't identify Ash as, you know, the princess of Dalmasca and otherwise, you know, fugitive on the run. Um, and they also don't identify Vosh von Rotzenberg of Dalmasca. <laughs> Yeah, they're just lowly soldiers that don't have a clue of what's going on anyways. I mean, they just know that it would be a lot of paperwork if they reported it. They just want to get back to drinking ale in the uh, in the, uh, in the the inn later. But yeah, basically to lure the guards away, we'll just, well, create a fight. Which we basically do by talking to all the NPCs and finding out that one of them stole a bag of coins and the other one, we tell the other one, hey, there is your bag of coins. So um, we lie. Together with Jules. We'll see his old friend. 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 If you have friends like that, you don't need enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Sky pirate thief and all around good guy. Yeah. Um, who also takes money from us at every possible moment. Like just now, so that we could start the like scaffold, even though we already had the most important knowledge of who actually stole the bag of coins. And also here, because, yeah, we need we want to go into the aristocratic area. Yep. So they're going to teach us about blocks of wood that we need, um, which apparently are something like more important than currency or something. But we got to give this guy 2,500 gil because he needs to give us information. So we need to throw him money because, uh, you know, he's a thief, but not a sky pirate. Um, but there's a big mini game where you can run errands for people of the city. Yeah, uh, uh, like they, they are very, very like important, but also everyone just throws them at you. In theory, you could also buy one for like a million or something. Oh yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah. How are you over here? Okay, so we have pairs, like one giver and one um, caretaker. So where is yeah. my? Are you my? No, you're my. You're the avid reader. God damn it. Uh, this is going well. Oh. You're the one I want to fight second. Where did my senior researcher go? <laughs> there is a senior researcher. Failed researcher. Okay. This one already came up here because I went far enough. Mm -hmm. And where's his wife? Waifu, waifu, there. So the, second, the third one is actually like, hey, we are running out of money, and she is like, but I want to buy new dresses. And then we tell her, hey, you could sell your old dresses. And she is actually fine with that. She's pretty incre incredible if you think about it. Uh... So, so, we invent, so we invented eBay. <laughs> I mean, it's for Arcadia, so I guess we invented eBay. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, active licenses. So yeah, we we're getting some new armor now. Use some HP. And you all the important stuff. Inquisitor wait. Spellbound. Inquisitor gives us magic regen when we get struck. So as we take damage we get MP back. Obviously on a white mage this is really handy. Yeah, no, we just get channeling. 10% less MP cost. Because we'll we also... take every MP cost, reduced MP cost that we can get. Yep, also grabbing the Sage's Ring uh, equipped license so that uh, Pinello can use the uh, Sage's Ring in the late late game where we need it most. First to last. Take. Yeah, we're going to, since we grabbed the Platinum Armor, it's going to... Uh, take away our ability to uh, auto-protect, so we now need to be able to cast Protect on Bosch for, you know, beef purposes. All right. So yeah, now we're good for the next area. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily need to buy it here, but it's just shorter and cheaper and it works. And We're the next here, area can be rough if you don't buy the army. It can even be rough if you do. Yeah, now it's the, the area, but is... Sid. Sid is annoying. Sid's annoying. The laboratory is okay either way. Yeah. But... Especially now that we like even cast Protect on Bosch with his new heavy armor. Uh... So yeah, arriving here, Bolsi is like, hey, why did what did it take you so long? I gave Jewels the chops for you. Mm -hmm. Good job, my friend. You really know which who to trust and who not to trust. Friends like these. Yeah. But yeah, now we get the news that a bunch of judges were sent to uh, Dracolor Labs because basically Jules sold us out. Uh, because, you know, he is very trustworthy, and by very trustworthy, I mean sold us out for money. Yep, he just sell, He just does everything for money. Okay, now we really don't want to go back to Nilbase, because goodness, that's a long time. Yep, instead, instead we're going to go to the secret place where the guy is just like, you know where you want to go, right? Like, yeah, I know where I want to go, and he's like, you sure want to go there? I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I want to go there. Oh, goodness. And of course, as we get to Dracolor Labs, we find something very important. All the soldiers are dead. Just, just, just corpses everywhere. Yeah. I mean, they're actually one or two that you could talk to. Yeah, they're like near death, though. Like, yeah. they're, they are, they are they mortally are their wounded. Last breath. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we didn't even do it. No XP and guild for us. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I guess. Such a crime. I wonder, I wonder what got all of this experience, because that could be really dangerous, actually. Yeah. But worry not. We can change that. There are also still other soldiers. More soldiers for us to take care of. All right. But yeah, so this is another little uh, puzzly area where we need to find the right switches to open the proper doors to make progress through the area. Also just door hitboxes. Eh, yeah, more door hitboxes. But yeah, there's some soldiers up here at the top and who... elevator trolls. Yeah, and there's 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 dudes in the elevator. Um, good news, good news is that we know Flamethrower 2, the sequel to Flamethrower. Yeah. In ICGS, Flamethrower, like, zero was was AoE. But yeah, they changed that. Uh, like, Fire and Cure were both AoE in ICGS. But they were like, nope. 
But you can still have Dark, because Dark isn't like the strongest attack anyways. And yeah, no, Fi Fire Aga will, will be good for basically all of the run. Like, not exclusively, but we'll use it still until very late. And yeah, so good old, let's just murder things on the way. If you're low on gil, it's also nicely, so just drop like 80 to 90 gil usually. Just for God, a small they're... backup. I mean, you kill like 20 of them. God, why why, why would they fight you if they're so underpaid? Like, come on. <sighs> would this be an okay time for a couple donations? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Um, I've got $25 here from Chris, who says, Final Fantasy XII puts the speed and the run in speed run. <laughs> Very much agree. And I have $100 here from Gloria Aubin. No comment, but thank you very, very much for your donation. Oh, thanks a lot. So, yeah. So, these five here in the end would actually be dangerous if you wouldn't go shopping, but now we just... We just go through. It's fine. Not a care in the world. Oh yeah, we're gonna patch up here real quick. Make sure that we've got a full tank of gas for the next fight. Okay, now we need to pay it. slight attention. Uh, we're starting to have like always one shop on our characters. Oh. Also, so we are starting to see reflect casts, and that means we really don't want to use Fire Aga anymore. Yeah, because we'll blow our own party up. Um, but yeah, the rooks here are here to protect Sid and be real annoying. Um, so you want to AoE them as long as you can. Yeah, I guess now that we've equipped the Berserk Abrasus for once, it's time to talk yeah. about Berserk. So, what does Berserk do? Point one, it will always just attack a random target, more or less. Um, the Berserk character is also like slower later on where we'll be running around. You will see the Berserk character, just, like Ash, just being behind everyone else. Also, I should really stay on Alexa, but we yeah. should be fine. Because a Siphon is a thing that just takes a lot of MP damage. But yeah, Sid pulls um, out the big laser cannon here. Yeah. Also, what Berserk does, yeah, increased damage, faster ATB, like a lot increased damage, faster ATB, and protection against confusion. But yeah, so Sid all in all, just pay. pretty insane. It, it's a beautiful skill in this game. It's so good. But yeah, Sid throws up a paling, which gives him some protection for a little bit there so he can do his fancy laser gun attack, and then it drops, and then he dies. You um, could actually uh, prevent that, like the PS2 speedrun does it, if you kill him fast enough. Because he yeah. still has to go from the middle to that spot, um, but he is immune as long as the rooks exist. And yeah, after they are gone, he will just go there, but... Yeah, no, we, we are not in the position to do so. Yeah, so it's just just do it the, the direct way, which is just wait it out and enjoy the show. Um, but yeah, there was also a haste gamote in that room, which was grabbed. Um, also, you got to see Sid's jacket for the first time. And I have to say that jacket is awful. <laughs> My man really needs to work on the boots, too. But hey, <laughs> did I even pick up the second chest? Yeah, it was a holy moat. It was a holy moat. Okay. So this fight Sorry. went so fluently that I was even unsure. Like, it was yeah, just no, over. You yeah, you stopped and grabbed them both while Sid was being invulnerable. Um, so, yeah, we get 5840 gil there, which is really handy. We bought Kiraga finally, or Kiraja, Cure 4, basically, in a game with yeah. five levels of Cure Magic, but that's our big heal for the rest Kyosu of the game. Kiraga has the problems that Kiraga is not AoE for some reason. Which is why yeah. I just don't even want to consider getting it. It's just bad. Um, unless you do like fancy, I don't know, decoy strats maybe. But I mean, at that point, might just use high potions or X potions or something. That seems like that would require work and thinking, and I'm not really here for that. I'm just here to go fast. Um. Also, yeah, why should I look at my notes? 
we just turn this because we now got Kiraja. Also, we want to go here. And this area is really annoying to do with high speed. I just go with the minimap and hope for the best and dismount mm. because we cannot go over the trigger with the chocobo. Um, yeah. Going with this way with two screen transitions because we don't want to care about traps. And screen transitions are fast anyways. Yeah, they're not bad in this at all. And this is the area with the weird map that's hard to tell where you are, but it's not bad. Uh, I, don't, I don't really need... Nah. Fine. So we are actually getting incredibly close to the $25,000 mark. So I was wondering, Chad, would you all be interested in maybe getting a $5 train going? See how fast we can get to $25,000? It'll be fun. Trust me. Dang. You're all insane. Also, I should keep some debt. Uh, distance. So Reflege is annoying. We really want to buff up because, well, we use our, lose all our MP very quickly, so healing is not a thing. Uh, oh goodness, could we please just kill it? Yep, also it applies the sap status, which causes your HP to run down. It applies slow, which, you know, you try to How counter- How did we get both slowed? Oh my goodness, this was rough. And just shows oh. why I really want to use all the things that we have. Yeah, got through it in one piece. And by in one piece, I mean, hey, uh, Ash is alive. Yeah, but Ash is also still alive. Um, but yeah, Reflecia also has, like, Curse, which just inflicts all the bad damage uh, status effects that we fortunately did not get. Yeah, um, basically, basically the, the MP drain on Reflecia alone makes it makes that fight in casual playthroughs really rough. Like, you don't if you don't know that it's coming, it... This fight will wreck you. Um, yeah. Like, you really want to just beat it really, really fast. Like, you, you have, like, enough... E Sometimes it also starts with Immobilize Guy, which is why you just want to run away with Pinello because of that bad things happen. You have, like, enough MP for one Asuna cast. Yep. Like, I wish I was kidding, but that's all we get. Yep, so now we're in the maze. Um, this is a mist-covered area where we have to... Normally, you go into these and you can see we're spinning the camera really quickly because you need to find the... And apparently, I'm not way. inside the circle for whatever reason. I thought you were inside the circle. There you go. So yeah, you find but the, real the, one. the picture didn't show up, so apparently, I wasn't enough in the circle. You were, like, right at the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't ask me, but yeah, you can't pause the camera. You can't pause um, the game by just changing the party leader in yep. order to take your time. There's a really cool accessory there that you get. You get the bubble belt, which just gives you... It's an accessory that just gives you the permanent bubble status, which, again, double health and gives you immunity to disease status, which is great. Uh, double health is going to be super, super important for just keeping everybody alive. But, yeah, you move from each of these to the next one. If you go in a direction that does not have the picture in it, uh, you get teleported back to start, basically, so... Okay. We at least got quote-unquote lucky because we have to go here anyways. Yeah. Because, yeah, we have a chest to get here. Uh, where are you? There you are. One time the defender. Uh, yeah, we need that to make, uh, make Bosch extra beefy. So, yeah. Yeah, we need to take accessory 16 to get accessory 17 for the bubble belt. Some battle lore because, yeah. Physical attacks with a katana scale off of basically everything. Uh, we don't have much else to do. Belias, because the story really wants us to use Belias. Uh, like, you can go actually go completely without the license bot if you, are, if you really like challenges. But, yeah, Belias is a must. It's plot required. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So you get the defender now and the bubble belt. And because we can, we auto sword. Okay, you know what? Hits. I really want my 5 LP. Just because we can. Thanks. For channeling, 
And there's the door. Um, and you have to summon Belias in front of the door. So yeah, no, no other, no other summon works. That was the time I tried Matthias. Nope. So they really, really want you to summon Belias. Oh, at this point, yeah, no. You can use Belias in theory. Sadly, it's not the fastest option. Um, why use this far back, Pinello? Pinello's just chilling. It's fine. Okay, so yeah, we could do it before, but I'll do it here after. You domain, you back as a swine. Okay, and now to get speedy, speedy. Uh, now it's time to lay the beat down on Daedalus here, who is. Weak and, yeah. weak and foolish for getting in our way. And manually cast Kirajas onto him because he is undead. But yeah, Daedalus is like the big damage check. Yep. Because when he is below 25%, I believe, he uses Rage, gets insanely buff, and deals tons of damage. But if you ran, if you just direct cast Kiraja on him a couple of times, uh, it just increases your damage output so much that he just explodes. Yeah, the big one was actually using Faraga for some reason. We thought that wasn't possible, probably because the PS2 run uses um, Reflected Vile, I believe. Weird. But yeah, Faraga just still does a lot more than buffed physicals. We're just here to do some DPS. Okay, and now we just... We're just gonna run. So yeah, we could defend are... these stuff. So what you can, for example, do is if two characters... So basically the game can only load so many characters on the screen, like mm. um, NPCs. So if two characters are far enough apart, you could despawn the enemies. But we ain't got time for that. We have a 4,000 4, HP barge. Also, um, there's please, a need as soon as the right person, Tonello. No, of course not. She's working not. on it. She's working on it. She's doing her best. It's not very good. Um, <laughs> magic regen, by the way, in this area is beautiful. This is one of the highest magic regen areas in the game that is not a boss arena. So MP not really going to be a big concern for the next stretch. Also, we're like not going to fight anything. Let's be real. Uh, yeah, another... but we also hope to not get status effect from yeah, or... these friendly Malboros. Which we love and... I mean, they applied the most important status effect of all to Pinello, death. <laughs> Goodness, we took a lot here. Run, Bosh. Oh, we're very poisoned. This we're very is poisoned. the last we're... thing I wanted to see. Oh, come on. Uh, we're very poisoned and having a bad time. We are stopped. Oh, no. You can't move and you can't act. This is awful. We're fine. We... Everything's fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's Almost, fine. Almost, Bosh. Almost. You did your best, Bosh. You, you did tried. your best. You did the job. <laughs> At least you tried. Uh, I still felt safer with your 7 HP than with France 401. It is fine. But yeah, we get to the save point here, so we're gonna res the party, pull out the real party. We're gonna put Fran back in the back. We're gonna pull back Ash and Pinello. Uh, uh... The worst is over now, right? Must be nice. <laughs> Indeed. Being young and naive. <laughs> I am neither of those things. Thank you very. Wait, what? <laughs> but no. Um, we done with that area. Um, in theory, if you had gone after the ch after the last switch, even a bit further up, you could have gone to the Aegis Shield, which gives magic, like a lot of magic block, which could be nice here. Um, but we at the point where we shouldn't need that. But um, Tyrant is a bit. Oh come on. Uh, Tyrant sometimes just does random stuff. 
And yep. yeah, I'll just ATB reset whenever Penelo decides to do something else and Kiraja. Yeah, Tyrant also just uh, locks out your techniques, which are the non-MP abilities that some characters get. Um, they're generally unimportant in the speedrun because we're all about berserking and spellcasting. Yeah, there was Traveler and Steel. And Steel, and that's really it. A and that's really it. Like, yeah, first aid exists, but we really don't want to use it because it really doesn't feel much. Um, could we please... Yeah, I'll just ATP reset every race I'm gonna see. There we go. Not even a bit spooky. Not even, not even a problem. Everything is fine. Tyrant is dead and you're not. I mean, that does sound like everything is fine. Yeah. But here's weird glowing orange area. Uh, no pew to Kira. Nope. I want to go down. Yep. There's no map for this area, so you've got to kind of know the area. There's a lot of wandering around. There's a bunch of buttons and switches in here. And there's a puzzle that leads to an optional boss. Um, but you can fight Ultima the High Seraph in this game. That's only on the revisit, so you cannot go there. Before yeah, having eventually. beaten Shen. The next yeah, boss that we are running towards. Yep. There's a ton of optional content in this game if you're a person who likes their RPGs with a ton of fun side content and extra bosses and things. Yep. You know, plus, plus there's a cameo by the greatest Final Fantasy character of all time. <laughs> so yeah, Penelo has no MP left, but... This area has, again, lots of mist, so we really, 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 like... Her MP is never be gonna be a problem. Um, yeah, these ones also lots of status effects, but... They are not too many. We want to get some mystic armor here for our mages, because it's free. Cold hair, Who but doesn't like free stuff? Free stuff is cool. Especially in a speedrun where you don't want to... Especially in a speedrun where you don't want to waste your time, like, spending money. Yep. And more free stuff. But yeah, Bash is just our tank. Hopefully. And usually. We can just do this. But yeah, hitting certain switches to open certain paths is important here. As we advance on through. Yeah, fortunately, this one is still pretty easy. When you're on the revisit, you have, like, a lot bigger floors and time doors and all that jizz. It's, it's a whole it's nether not, beast. It is not a lot of fun. Well, it's a lot of fun, but, like, I don't yeah, understand. the enemies are strong. <laughs> and the enemies are very powerful. Like, the big thing that always throws me off is I don't know how somebody puzzled through this area without, like, the help of a map or anything. Like the first person to have played through this, it's gotta be pretty. It's gotta be pretty incredible to be able to do it kind of blindish. Well, you just make maps, probably. <laughs> With like. If it was me, I would paper. probably just make maps. Yeah. Do you know how I, I have? To, do you remember the FF thirteen two like clock mini game? Yep. I have written I it sure down. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote it down and tried the possibilities from what needs to be last to. Here we go. Okay. Um, bubble mode Ash. Bubble mode yourself. This boss can cast disease and has very strong single target magic. Also, Haska mode, which we just get at some point. Um, it's not doing anything anyway right now. Yeah, we need to look out for Siphon actually, so I should just go back to Elixir. Um, looking good right now. The bar is a bit. Um, wrong in the sense that you, we, at, uh, at the later parts we deal a lot less damage, but dang, this was a quick fight again. It's a good shame as I fight. Really clean. <laughs> so yeah, other modes there's a uh, the chest, there's a reverse mode, but we already got one from Trials, so no reason to get one. Because, yeah, reverse is a status, well, Characters inflicted by reverse, like if they get healed, they 
for healing, they take damage, and if they would take damage, they get healed. But that also means that, like, if Fenelos throws a heals, heal and you are reversed, that's not a good combination, so you need to be really careful. And it also doesn't, like, hold on for long. Yeah, getting reversed means that Pinella will heal, means that you'll take a little bit of damage, and then Pinella will heal you to death pretty much right on the spot. Because the Gambit system, while neat and intelligent and good for stuff, does not factor for, in particular, reverse status. That might be. But yeah, you can also, uh, reverse also gets cast away with Asuna. Uh, but yeah, yeah, in general, so... we also don't have decoy to be like, this is our tank, this is the one that gets attacked, and all that. Um, I mean, in theory, Tyrant should always attack the closest ca like the clo closest target. I mean, you've seen how that works. Penelo was very convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Penelo had the white mage armor on, and enemies know that you you have to you have to off the healer first. So, you know, he was just charging her down. Yeah, healers are too powerful. What can I say? They they really are. White mages are the best. Totally unbiased, I know. A hundred percent, totally unbiased. All right, so we are gonna get the last guest character. An actual, I don't know if actual Sky Pirate, but at least a way more renowned Sky Pirate. Redis. A more renowned, a more Who? renowned Sky Pirate than, than Balthier? Uh, yeah. Who also has his own, uh, I'm not sure. No, I think we use a straw, but yeah. Most importantly, he is decent. He has Arise, and he gives us Domain Calvadosis, which we have used one earlier, which inflicts bravery for more physical damage. A lot more physical damage. It's not small. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you have any donations, I think you can. We definitely do. Know. Chat is absolutely popping off with $5 donations right now. Um, I've got $5 here from Happy Bear. Final Fantasy XII is so underrated. Let's get some donations going to celebrate it. And from Physics Shebang, we have another $5 with the $5 train leaving the station. Choo-choo! Thank you for all you do and to all the amazing runners during this event. Keep saving those frames. You all rock. And from Heldon Soubret, we have $25 saying five tickets to the $5 train, please. And if I could actually just take a moment, speaking of $5, uh, one of our sponsors, the Yeti, who creates amazing merch and apparel for video game culture and have been the official merch sponsor of Games Done Quick events since 2011, with over $1 million donated to GDQ charities, they are donating $5 from each shirt from the Frost Fatales 2022 collection to the Malala Fund. You can check out the Yeti official Frost Fatales 2022 collection at theyeti.com. Hey, we got an airship, so we could go anywhere in the world with it. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to... Uh, we're just going to... You gonna know how that works. We speed we're gonna, <laughs> Yeah, the world is your oyster. Where do you want to go? The last dungeon. What do you mean? I ain't got time for this. Yeah. We also did our last shopping. Uh, just a nice katana. Wind attribute, which is neat, because the next bosses are either resistant to wind or weak. Mm -hmm. um, and some phoenix dance, just because I wanted to be safe. Not sure. So 13 should be enough, but I mean, because they in theory only used to revive Pinello. <laughs> yeah, in theory. In theory, you don't want to run low. But yeah, so this is this is the riddle around a lighthouse. Um, the best raid in Final Fantasy 14. Don't at me. Um, but more importantly, this is normally in a casual playthrough. This is disease and self destruct the dungeon, um, which is always a good time. And by always a good time, I mean we're gonna explode um there are some it's... there are some required fights against bombs in here here's the first boss time though. for the hardest boss and not, probably the boss you would most often die to um because yeah this is hydro hydro knows stuff like curse again or fira Fierga, which just reduces the... our mp to zero and we need to be really careful about and could you please stop it we do not have why... the mp this is why you make sure you have a couple of extra elixirs because this fight can just 
This is you know. just one of the fights that can't be like, nope. Ah, no, no LP for Pinello again. Now I know why she was low. <laughs> she keeps dying to bosses. She just dies right at the end. So yeah, we went Elemental Katana because the next boss is weak to win. But yeah, blow up Hydro without too much of a fuss, all things considered, other than your MP. Yeah, co cost, a, cost a few elixirs. That was unfortunate. But yeah. yeah you, had, you had two extra. It's fine. <laughs> I, I know my backups, if in, if in doubt. Um, I'm also still not sure how I want to do this. So, at this part of the game in particular, we need to grab these black orbs. Um, and you will notice that the game speed very momentarily drops to one. Nikki uses the hotkey to drop it to one to one X speed because the black orbs are there for only a few seconds and you need a bunch of them to power an elevator to make progress. Um, and so not getting them is real bad. <laughs> Yeah, you could do it with a two times speed, like if it works well. It's also always a question of whose gambit do you probably want to turn off because if if the characters are just influenced by anything, then you will have an even harder time to grab them. So yeah, I just I still kind of play it by the ear or by feeling because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's weird. Like optimally, you of course like to use Pinello because Pinello doesn't attack. And even though these birds should be free, suddenly people start dying and you're like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> yeah, you don't think about it when you have somebody who's literally dedicated to casting, you know, big healing magic on your party. Until you don't have that big healing magic on your party. So yeah, switching to Bosch. Using the third black or all we need, and we can move on. She's a very, very friendly boss. Yeah. The bosses just don't stop having neat, neat gimmicks that you need to, like, care about. So on Hydran series, the only gimmick was don't die and keep your distance in order to hopefully not get fear guard, which, well... But yeah, so we have Pandemonium. Pandemonium at 50%, give or take, unless it's confused forever, which we cannot do. Yeah, please just assume a bit. Um, at 50% cast perfect defense, which I think on normal speed, like, means that for two minutes, it will just not... Could we please uh, not take damage from anything? What is going on? Ah, there we go. But for some whatever reason, you can cast Arise with Redis in order to get rid of perfect defense. Really? Yes. Oh, we never dispelled it. Oh, this is... This is unfortunate and I don't like it. And could we just please... Like, why is this getting out of hand? Wait, nope. You use a Phoenix Sun on Radis. You use Curaja on yourself. And everyone yes, else I'm... just should be able to. Well, no MP, no MP for Bash. Don't care. <laughs> yeah, Pandemonium is a giant turtle and does beat you down pretty hard. So. Gambit, no Curaja, Dispel Protect. And yeah, so that's it. Probably a bit rougher because Penelo was occupied with casting a Sunon character, so she never dispelled the Protect off of Pandemonium. Yep. Things you don't think about sometimes. <laughs> and things that come up when you least expect them to. Yeah. Order of operations is important. Yeah, and usually your own status effects are more important than the opponent's status effects. This is very true, because your status effects can kill you, and that would be bad. Yeah. 
Oh, I mean, if you are blinded, then you don't deal any damage. If they have protect, you still deal some damage. Mind yeah. if I interrupt really quick? No, go ahead. I am very happy to say that we have now raised $25,000 for Malala Fund. So thank you so much, everyone, for your generosity, your donations, and coming to this event. We love you all. Thank you. Yo, that's amazing. What a big and, milestone. And, Incredible. And we did actually get a $250 donation that I believe pushed us over from M the Marvelous, just saying 25k hype. Now we're at the tower climb. So there are some enemies that must die because they form bridges for us so that we can make progress forward. Uh, Chimera brains are here. They have petrify. There are bombs along the way that have self-destruct. Uh, this part's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, actually for most parts, the self-destruct here is from these brain pans, but yeah, we need to fight some of them. The green ones, we'll also later see red ones. Wait, 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 wait. Also, I want this chest just because... It's, in, it's invisible or something. No, no, no. I just... So, I've gotten it for quite a while. Like the Dragon Helm. It is just better armor for Barge, which you don't necessarily need, but it's nice to have. Yeah. But for some reason, ever since I, we have this, I've decided to... Okay, let's also get the Dragon Mail for a small detour. I have, like, I regularly forget the Dragon Helm. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just... Because, uh, yeah, just for safety and some more damage. Like, heavy armor gives you strength, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Like, light armor, which we don't see, gives you HP. And mystic armor gives you intelligence for more yep. magic damage. And yeah, for now we just, it just means we kill every brain pan on the way. Um, this will change very soon. Um, oh. Yeah, you see the Berserk Ash running back and forth. Oh. Okay, this shouldn't matter. We, oh, we're still 26. Okay, so I need to set up something. Soonish. So remember when I said if two characters are far enough apart, we can despawn enemies? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna try that. At four times speed, because it's more fun that way. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do it, but fast. <laughs> so, Penelo, Kuraja yourself. Uh, this is not where I wanted to be. Oh, come on. I don't want... No, 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 no. Okay, everything about that was wrong. We did not get the despawn, and we got attacked by the Arrow Knight, which I don't know when I have last gotten attacked by it. Okay, let's just try this again. Yep, so queuing up Kiraja because it takes a while to cast. Uh, still not exactly where I want to be. Also, freaking birds respawned. Thanks. But yeah, we pop back to Pinello there to make her cast on uh, herself the second time. Oh, the data is back because I spawned it and there is no way to get rid of it. Okay, we need to go for the old strats. Which mean we just run into a corner of one of them and are like, yep. Cool. Here we go. Nothing's gonna stop us. Which is <laughs> yeah, a bit more painful as you can see. And you can also see why we don't want the expensive spells because Pinello is running out of MP. Yeah, Which... we don't. And we have, and we have like we'll an ether and We'll just give her an ether and hope that that's enough. We have one elixir left, which we don't want to use up just yet. Yeah, well, there are still backups, but... But... Backups are slow. So yeah, at least all the brain pans spawned. Um, so for example, the stairs there, you want to go up on the left in order to spawn two brain pans, and not a brain pan and a daydar. The daydars are the, the red ones. Which, you would see the first one actually there if I spawned one. Oh, no, I think downstairs also, but we just ran past it. Okay, the 7 8. Oh, yeah, it also doesn't matter if they self destruct or we kill them. It at most matters that we pick up the drops. Nice, and that's exactly 9 and 10 now. 
Yep, and we, they remember, you'll notice that they form these green bridge segments for us so that we can make continued progress, and they solidify when we get enough down. Um, so yeah, and now that we have had the you need to kill multiple times, the last one is, yeah, you only need to kill three, and you get three already on the spot. So you can just, for most of the way, run through, which is also nice because most green brain pants also have red datars right around the corner. Yeah, so red yeah. datars have things like level 3 disable, so they can lock mm -hmm. them out. We are not 27 yet, I believe, but with the bonus XP we've gotten, we are also not too far away. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, we are exactly 27. I, I thought I thought I saw us level to 27, so... Yeah, I just see the AoE disable guy, and I'm like, well, I know where that came from. All right, if I read a couple more donations. Yeah, sure, go for it. Yeah, we're still getting some in for that $5 train we had earlier uh, from Anonymous, $5. Donation trains, incentives, bows, can we speed run them all? A very good question. And another donation uh, from TMS LFT, $5, choo-choo. And I do have... Uh, a, sorry, a $25 donation here from Avery it says, make Flygon play more Mario. And that's a great reminder that we do have an incentive for the 11 exit run. We're, we need $6,000 to make Frozen Flygon do the additional, um, sorry, a bonus 11 exit run following the Super Mario World All Castle run. So if you want to see that happen, get your donations in now. Can we run them all? For someone that runs basically every Final Fantasy, um, but that's a big task, sure. <laughs> We'd be here for a hot minute. I mean, I've only taken four days for 16 hours to do 1 to 15. Nice. That sounds amazing and absolutely incredible. <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> But yeah, we have defeated Slit, who is weak to fire, so we finally get to use Fairaga again. Um, sadly, we, I could not spot a five-digit number, but this is also one of the two fights where you could sometimes see that IZJS has raised the damage cap. Yep. To be higher than 9,999. Which is super useful for a couple of the optional fights that we're obviously well past at this point in time. Yeah. Also, a nice HD addition is this map that you can trigger by pressing the L3 um, analog stick. Because, yeah, you give up your map here, but you only give up, like, the main map. Like, somehow the other maps they didn't account for when putting that in afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. But in order to open doors in this section, to make progress, you need to give up some of your abilities. And you can give up magic, or you can give up techniques, or you can give up your map. Yeah. Which, for a speedrunner who either has access to the map this way, or otherwise just knows the map of the area pretty well, uh, seems like a fairly good trade, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, this is probably one of the two areas I'm worse at. Everything else, I'm pretty... Oh, come on. Don't... Why do I have freaking get no? Give me that chest. Oh, this is bad. We actually killed everything. You serious? All right, just revive stuff. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Everything is fine. This is what happens when you forget to turn off gambits. You just will never actually trigger anything. You just, you just, you just fight. Yeah, and yeah, you, you have one of the fake walls. This actually tapes, saves a lot of walking distance. Yep. But yeah, as our plot update goes, we know at the top of the tower lies Ash's destiny and some other things, but mostly Ash's destiny. Uh, and a rock. <laughs> Actually, at the top of the tower is the biggest, the biggest, most important piece of Nethysite in the world. It's real good. Um, there's also Muramasa up there as well. So, 
the yeah. third best katana in the game? I forget if there's... Uh, it game. should be the third best, yeah. Yeah, because there's... Because there's Murasame, which we never see, because Want that's from... Have... Yeah, and the uh, special super weapon. Been... Yep. Yeah, if you have anything to plaque uh, or donations... This boss is probably the only one that does really not have a gimmick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a good time, I think, to remind everyone that when you make a donation, you are entered for the chance to win some absolutely remarkable prizes. I mentioned earlier, one of them is a sealed copy of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age for Nintendo Switch. But we also have a Bowser icon iron-on patch and even a Perler Sprite bundle of four Pokemon trainers from various games in the series. And you can check out all the prizes we have available at gamesdonequick.com. And I'm very excited. We're still getting in $5 donations. This train has been absolutely wonderful. From Old School Zero, just says Choo Choo Chocobo with $5. And Callie, another $5. $5 train. I don't know how many times I can say $5, but I'm going to keep on saying it because it's awesome to see. That was Fenrir. Is dead yeah. now. He's just, I think, powerful. But he doesn't really do anything special, I want to say. Like, he hits and he casts bravery on himself. No need gimmick or anything. We just fight and sometimes someone dies. Sometimes someone gets... Well, like, he looks at if someone gets uh, blinded and that Penelo doesn't care about it, but Radis was an eye drop, but that also is pretty rare. And the next two screens we have like anti trolls. Antites are like big balls. Um, this one here is blue. Just pretty annoying, but yeah. Fortunately, the chance for it to appear is not too big. And then we finally get to the third and last like area of this tower. Well, the amount of elevators in here that really don't take, make any distance is incredible. What a great design of a building. Yeah. Didn't you always want an elevator that only goes from floor 90 to floor 91? But only just. Yeah. Look, a bomb. We're going to teleport yeah. away from it, though. <laughs> We could have picked up a demon shield earlier um, that would actually protect us from dark damage and make these bombs actually heal us, but it's not like it actually matters. Here we have some neat teleporters, which are kind of a puzzle, but obviously as speedrunners, yeah, we just know where to go. Don't ask me where the other teleporters lead us to or anything. You really only Most, know the way you have to go. It's, it's mostly to like optional treasures and things like, or there's like a non-hidden wall route to here, I believe, but it's like super long. Yeah, but I mean, this is also optional treasure, but really, really wants that treasure. Ah, we need to get that ultimate blade so that uh, Bosch can deal out the additional damage here at the end of the game. More damage, cause more damage is always good. Oh, rip Pinello. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Wind Katana, Aminum Rakumo. Again, cause, well, our next boss is Hashmo, an Earth type, who, surprise, surprise, is weak to wind this elemental damage. Weak to wind elemental damage. Okay, will we get. Here we have a rare spawn the tower, 20%. Please don't. I mean, people want to see it, but I really want that elixir. Um, domain, back is the swine. Yeah, we want the float mode, because we can. Yeah, because we might get quaked here. Oh, we will. We we just, we might get quaked or something. I don't know. He's Earth Elemental. How bad could it be? <laughs> so, yeah. And obviously, we need to be, like, especially dramatic. Cannot skip this because, yeah. Ooh, spooky, spooky boss. 
Well, this looks like we would be traversing a lot, but I think we're really only going from 88 to 90. Ah, nice. Dis yeah. Nice, um, yeah. But also, yeah, right, Radis doesn't only come with seven domain Calvados's, he also comes with three serums. Yep, and this boss does apply disease pretty regularly. Here's Quake. So, here comes the rocks. They're gonna fall. We're going to yeah. ignore Sadly, it. Sadly, there are no Earth Elemental spells we could cast, but, oh. Now it's dead. We did it. Ash died. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would give balls. Penelo more HP because we can, but also giving her the, Mura the Muramasa again. Because Femfred actually absorbs wind elemental damage, and yeah, it's not good. I mean, it doesn't actually matter too much. We don't use the sword anymore against Femfred. Now that I think about it. But yeah, stronger weapon is always better. Also, fun fact, this cutscene there, this random cutscene, ported us from floor 92 to flight 97, which you wouldn't even pay attention to normally. Um, and in between those floors, there's like, for example, a chest with a mega elixir, which we don't need, but it is really well hidden. <laughs> So yeah, coming up the first small boss rush, um, starting off with Gabrans. Gabrans is Bash bra Bash's brother, and if you have Bash here um, at 50 HP, when the cutscene loop gonna play, we would get a bonus cutscene. And this fight is not too bad without Bash, that we'll just Killing not have him. And skip not that one. Killing the Kingslayer will win you back your honor. When you abandon home and kin, your name was forever stained with blood. Oh yeah, I should also... No, 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 no. Go to haste care mode. Because we're going to use that one soon. Getting Bash in now. Who then proceeds to boop Gabranth on the helmet with the ultimate blade and he dies. <laughs> yep. Now we're using the haste care mode. Yep, piercing and to... And F please doesn't die because... Penelo used the haste game mode at this bill, and Ash has tanked everything, but that usually works. Hey, important question. Where does Sid pull that gun from? Ah, uh, just this normal thing. Okay. He just does it. Now you do this, and Flame Rod, Bangle. Did I forget anything? Nope. Um, switch to her and go to Echo Herbs. Because, yeah, now it's Famfred time. Famfred is weak to fire. You see these 11k that we just dealt? But Famfred knows Wartasha and Wartasha can't silence. And we don't have any gambits in case Ash gets silenced. So if that happens, we need to manually do it. Yeah, everything else I don't care. <laughs> honestly. Um, we can take this elixir. Nice. And we skip... An animation attack from Sid. Well, Pamphrit so is still alive. This one always happens. Yep, this is what he does after Pamphrit drops. He breaks out the big laser cannon. But yeah, now we also take some like reflect damage whenever we deal damage to um, Sid. But Penel is a good support, so it's irrelevant and we ignore it and just push on through. That is the end of the Ritter on a Lighthouse. Um, Ash finds her destiny, which is to destroy all the Death Sight in the world because, you know, she doesn't want to be that kind of princess, I guess. Uh, she wants to rule through love instead of fear. There's an option to save the game, and we're going to go to the final, final dungeon, which is very small, but first we've got to go through a cutscene. Yeah, if you have anything left. Um, now we have a bunch of cutscenes before we start with the final bosses. So now would be a great time. Yeah, we definitely do. Uh, Daftum donates $50. Longtime watcher of the GDQ, first time dono, and first time seeing the Vitals live, enjoying everything so far. And I have two $25 donations here, one from Aquanon and one from Zombo Rombo. Again, both $25. Thank you so much for your donations. 
And another one, $25 here from Pete, who says $25 for Grimoire Weiss. And that's a good reminder for the Near Automata uh, bid war that we have open right now. You get to decide the skin of the companion pod during the Near Automata run. Your choices for the bid war are Cardboard, Grimoire Weiss, or Retro Red. And I'm just refreshing right now to see where we're at. Looks like Grimoire Weiss is ahead with $80, followed by Cardboard at $10, and Retro Red at $0. So poor Retro Red needs some love here, guys. So why don't you get a couple donations in there, boost it up a bit. Wow. Everyone's so generous. It's amazing. And what an amazing cause is it? So, yeah. Evil, evil. So, all the airships are actually named by what we normally know as Summon. So, yeah, we had the Leviathan earlier. Now we are going to the Bahamut. Um. Because, I mean, you can't not have them even if they are not the normal summons. Which, in the Evil East universe, are called a bit differently. Uh, I want to take those see Take Barge, thanks, with this casual 5600 HP. And after a short walk... We also don't have a map here, but this area is really, really short. Could be. Oh, come on. Equipping this again and putting this to wait. Um, do. I mean, you can give one to Ash. Usually shouldn't be needed, but better safe than sorry. So before we go into the last boss, would it be all right if I reminded everyone who we are raising money for today? Sure. Yeah, so we are all here raising money for Malala Fund, which is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invests in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more at Malala.org. So yeah. Uh, neat little things that we set up here. So Gabrant uses a 50%. We again have a longer cutscene, but we will not skip that. Uh, we need Bash. Okay, and now we use a reverse mode. Um, but he uses Renew. Oh, doesn't even get that far. And we just use a Reflect Gear mode on him. So the Renew actually hits one of our targets itself. Yep. So yeah, you set up a reverse mode because usually at the end he targets Penelo, but I guess the bravery on Ash plus good damage rolls and combos just meant that we didn't even need that. Uh, and yeah, now time for, well, three phases of Vayne. Vayne Solidor. Starting off really neat. Could you not protect yourself? It's the worst timing. Yeah. He'll just target Penelo and we just run away. With them. Will again know all That's that is really dangerous, dangerous. I mean, it's phase one, but... Vayne is very talky and is just like, Yo, so I heard you want to foment revolution. No, don't do that. Yep. He was, in theory, like, also fighting the bots of gods, but in the end he just became... Um, also, I should really... You... Domain yourself. You... Bubble mode yourself. You... Bubble mode Ash. You... Nope. Back as a swine yourself. Yep. I'm gonna try to maximize that damage output right now. Yeah, and also we bring some time in between, like, his first... Like, having some time between his first and second animation is nice, because if you, like, really go for it, you could just stack them right back to back. 
Um, and we want to have, want to be buffed for the second phase in order to hopefully like skip some attacks. Cause the animations are slow. Holy smokes! That was a combo, my from from where he. Yeah, Ash got blowed up real bad. Um... Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, it's fine. We'll so just do got... the same as normal. So yeah, we have a lot of flying swords, which we just berserk and just try to deal as much as possible and hope to skip. Yep. This attack in the first phase, which just worked. Was still nice. And we also yep. hope that we killed at least fast enough that the bubble mode is still going on for his last animation attack, which is called Tree of Sephira, which can deal. Oh, she doesn't have bubble mode anymore. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Um, can't deal up to 3,500, I believe, but can also, like, miss or 2,500. Or we could just skip it if we are lucky. There are strats that try to, like, increase the chances of skipping it, but if Vayne decides that he w wants to pull it off, then he wants to pull it off. But that's not this one, it's the next one. This one is assured. Yeah, so this one is, like, what, 1,500? But yeah, I also want to elixir at some point. We could do that now. Um, let's use a holy mode. Nope. Almost. Almost. So yeah, was there is kind of an effect capacity that basically only a certain amount of spells and stuff can be cast at the same time. So you can use a holy mode or so to just deal damage and push it a bit. Because, yeah, this yep. animation attack obviously has way more effect capacity than a normal attack. Yeah, so basically you're trying to animation lock Vayne by casting a spell and having your spell animation go off while your two physical fighters are fighting away. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah. Wait a second. Do we want to... Do we want to heal here? Um, no, Penelo, you, Kiraja, you... So usually we instantly kill him, so this is weird. But he is just hanging on by, uh, well... Thread. We will see Quite how it literally. goes. If not, we have to go into trial mode. I have never done it myself, but you can go into trial mode in order to heal yourself. Yep, here is the undying. Here's the final fight. Um, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just go into trial mode. <laughs> I don't know if that was a strat I wanted to show off today. Everything has been going so normal and standard, but sure, let's just go into trial mode in order to heal ourselves. One last hop in trial mode. Let's kill some rats. <laughs> Shout out to all the other people that have been here, um, who I'm basically copying right now. <laughs> Because uh, I haven't had to use that strat myself yet, somehow. Because, um, yeah. Apparently, we just got really bad rerolls. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll take those. Sure. <laughs> you killed Vayne and Vayne didn't kill you? How bad could it be? Oh, it's not over yet. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have the Undying. Um, last fight. I basically want to deal some damage, and then we just want to stack buffs to just skip all the bad phases and just murder him instantly. Um, so you... Domain... I mean, if you don't feel like you have anything to do, you can just do this. Then you Domain Ash... And then you back the swine yourself. And now it's, it's go time. And now it's go time. And dying and cast some big spells like Mega Flare, and then start hitting chain magic and casting multiple spells and uh, apply faith. And then I see how Bosch doesn't have focus, and I'm like, how about we give Bosch focus? Oh yeah, and also this is not a circle, so people can just get stuck here, which is amazing. <laughs> because I mean, let's be real, doing actual circles would just be way too much work. Doing circles is hard in in most programming. And. We are almost time, but we need to go... We should be fine after this. We are already in red. 
Oh, come on. Really? I, we didn't want to see this. I'm not, today. not set up for this. Come on. Everything uh, was so smooth, and now you're pulling this. We at best get one more paragraph after this, and then happens perfect defense and like two more animation attacks, which I have no clue if I can tank them because I don't even have an elixir left. Yeah, the Undying is supposed to be dead right now, by the way. We're not supposed yep. to ever see this. Oh, goodness. Um, we have bubble modes, right? We have bubble yeah, modes. Yeah, you have a couple. You have plenty of bubble modes. Yeah, I don't know what my pace is, but apparently it was too good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, de it's, it's dead now. Because for some reason I didn't turn the time on. Okay, we still have six bubble modes. We just do not have any MP here left. So that's a problem. I know we have an elixir left. Never mind. We should be able to tank through all of this. Here it goes again. I, I believe. As long as he just doesn't do them right back to back. So since he's already low, like... This defense phases shouldn't take that long. Like, the animations probably take longer. But yeah, we have this. And then we have still Terra Flare after what's that as well. Because, yeah, in theory, it is magic, def magic defense at 25. Um, physical defense at 50. And perfect defense at 75. But yeah, we, we pushed that a bit. <laughs> yeah. Here's the Terra Flare. Enjoy one of the finest looking explosions in Final Fantasy. Yeah. Some more action for the fans. Oh, come on. Didn't I say that I have freak that I have uh, bubble modes? Oh, it hit you with, I think it hit you with Piercing Dispelga uh, in between. Oh, I did, might not have paid attention to that. Yeah, possible. Um, we are on that, so... Didn't I want to decide that... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nearest visible is a great thing, because visible is a very broad term. Ugh. Like, a very, very broad term. Um, Phoenix down, Ash. Yeah, I I'm not sure if I should have planned for this. This just always takes forever and it's rough and... I have a donation here for you, uh, Kagia Nikki. Would you like to hear it? Sure. All righty. We've got $25 here from Margaret Ann. Good luck, Nikki. You can do it. Also, if the final boss was good at predicting snow, would that make him a weather vane? I am. <laughs> oh, sorry. I am. Yay. Nah, it was real. I was close to dying. Ash just somehow got one Pyraga off, even without flame staffs that I accidentally unequipped, and that was enough. So that's just how close we were. So the Faraga came in just like it was predicted, my gosh. Super clutch. Uh, yes, thank you so much. So it was Final Fantasy XII. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. I loved it. That was, was great. I remember three hours ago you were killing mushrooms and now this. <laughs> yeah. You know, typical RPG stuff from Very we are saving RPG. the cat to we are killing the gods. <laughs> but yeah. It is imp the fist bump is very important before yes. we wrap up. The fist bump. <laughs> uh, do either of you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, I mean, I guess shoutouts to the community. Um, this game has really picked up after the last Final Fantasy relay that's um, almost yearly gonna mate in which like multiple teams do Final Fantasy runs. Um, shoutouts to uh, the RPG Valkyries that Demi and I are part of also. Amazing group of female RPG speedrunners. Um, yeah, sh shoutouts to this event, um, raising money for an amazing cause and allowing me to run even so. <laughs> Time zones are 
Time zones are really not friendly. And as a European, I sadly get to see way too few things of this marathon. And yeah, shoutouts to my amazing host and, co and co co commentator. That I have had here with me. Aw. <laughs> Thank you. Take that. And yeah, as for myself, I just ran all the multitude of games, lots of Final Fantasy, Pokemon, Digimon, you call it. Um, all I can promise is I never stick to one game for too long. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for me. I know if you all have something to say. Any shoutouts, Severine? Nah, I think I'm good. Thank, thank you again to GDQ, though, for uh, letting me hang out and do commentary for a friend of mine. Um, cause it's always wonderful. Um, I know I just like doing Nikki's commentary runs because I think we've got good chemistry. We have a good time. So yeah. that's really what matters. And I hope everyone else had a good time too. Oh, it was a blast. This run was great. time in the end, by the way. Did I get sub three? Uh, your final time was uh, three hours, six minutes, and 38 seconds. Ah, okay. I mean, lots of time was lost on the final boss. The Bahamut has fallen. The final test is upon us. The judges shall rule us no more. Oh, take a talking. This is Judge Magister Gabon. All quarters All right. Thank you so much, Kaguya, uh, Nikki, and Demarine. It was an absolutely amazing... And another $10 here from Cyprus. Again, no comment, but thank you so much for your donations. And I would like to remind everyone that we have a couple bid wars open right now. We currently have the Save or Ditch Yoshi bid war open. You get to choose whether Yoshi will be saved or ditched in Valley of Bowser during the Super Mario World run. Currently, it looks like Ditch Yoshi is sitting at $284 to save Yoshi sitting at $125. So, um, looks like we got a classic save the animals here. So if you want Yoshi to be saved, get your donations in now. Or you know what? If you want to ditch Yoshi, get your donations in too. And the other bid war we have open is Nier Automata for the pod skin choice. Looks like Grimoire Reese is still sitting ahead, looking, sitting at $80 with Cardboard following at $10. And Retro Red, poor Retro Red, only at zero. So hopefully we can get some donations in there and make this a proper bid war race. We also have an incentive for Super Mario World 11 exit run. If you want to see Frozen Flygon complete and a bonus 11 exit run following her Super Mario World All Castle run, get your donations in. It will be absolutely incredible. I know I want to see it. I know you want to see it. So we are already on our way with, out of the $6,000 we need, $1,620 raid. So get your donations in now.
And this is a good time to remind everyone about the amazing prizes you can win. So when you are making a donation and picking your incentive, you are actually entered to win some remarkable prizes. All of them can be found on gamesdonequick.com. A couple highlights I have for you, including... As I mentioned before, a sealed copy of Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age 4 Switch, a Perler Sprite bundle for Pokemon trainers, or even an iron-on patch. So, really remarkable prizes. If you want to be entered to win, make sure to select an incentive and uh, donate at that time. Thank you so much for your donations. And this is a good opportunity to remind everyone why we are here. We are raising money for Malala Fund. Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invests in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more at Malala.org. And if you want to have a look at the schedule, coming up next, we are going to have Klonoa Door to Phantom Meal, followed by Malaka, and then Near Automata. So plenty of speed runs coming up. Stay put. Get your donations in. We got tons of speed running coming at you. So maybe go get a cup of tea, cup of hot chocolate, maybe a coffee, a little snack. Get settled in. We have tons more coming your way soon. All right, so that about does it for me today. I have had an incredible time hosting for all you remarkable people. And I got to say, you're all pretty incredible. You're all here helping raise money for a great cause. So, of course, you are incredible. Uh, so, Frost Fatals 2022 will be back after these messages. And I will be back tomorrow. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the absolutely lovely Threech, who will be your host for the next couple of runs. Have a great day.
2022. Happy Monday. Happy last day of February for those of us still on the 28th. My name is Threech and I am going to be your host through the next two runs. Very excited to be here. Super pumped to see what the night has in store for us. So everyone get ready for some really great, very entertaining runs coming right up. For right now, we are going to send you over to a prize segment with Frozen Flygon and Scent. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Frost Fatals 2022. My name is Scent, and joining me, as always, is the absolutely incredible Frozen Flygon. Frozen, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing just well. You know, Threech mentioning that today was the last day of February actually really got me, because when we were we were putting together the, the prize schedule for this event, I had, like, a 3 a.m. panic attack, because I noticed that there were no prizes scheduled between February 28th and February 29th. And my brain... <laughs> just went oh my god what do we do what are we gonna what's gonna happen wait wait, all right yeah february has 28 days i'm yeah but you know what has more than 28 prizes this event and they are absolutely amazing let's talk about some of them so from our good friends over at fan gamer we have this absolutely beautiful book i'm stuck in a video game it's adorable it's by uh drawn by nina masumoto and uh, written by suyoshi khan who was the producer of a really popular uh, japanese a show you might know, Game Center CX, you know, Kaicho On! Uh, it's a super cool <laughs> show about an old Japanese comedian who tries to beat really hard Nintendo, uh, you know, old school games. Super fun. But this book is about a little girl who really loves video games so much that she gets pulled into a video game world. And um, turns out life in video games is a little bit more difficult than we thought. Uh, absolutely adorable. $5 minimum of the nation. Thank you so much to our friends at Fangamer for sending that out to us. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We have so many cool things. We do! How about uh, from our friend Billy Phoenix? We have this lovely copy of Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. We just saw a run of it. It looks absolutely great. It's a super cool it speed game. It's a super cool casual game. If you enjoy Final Fantasy, you should definitely give it a shot. And a huge shout out to Billy Phoenix for sending that out to us. Now, Court, why don't you tell us about some of the other lovely artwork we have here yes. while I go ahead and quickly refocus that camera. Oh, awesome. Sounds great. Thank you. So, yes, we have some amazing prizes from some awesome artists in the community. Thank you to everyone who has donated, like Kay Duffels here, who has donated this ink and gold foil Star Road painting. It is absolutely beautiful. You have the detail of Star Road from Super Mario World, which we might see later if we get that 11 exit run met will definitely be heading on over there so thank you so much to kate Offson. this is a 20 dollar minimum donation all day today so if you you know that's 20 dollars minimum at any point during the second day of our marathon and we also have some amazing perlers from count gooby for a 10 dollar minimum donation you can get the entire set there's a bunch of them so you got this little small trainer we have you know, this one's doing a little bit of a pose. This looks like May, who I absolutely love. And we have a few other trainers as well. Looks like Dawn. And the other character that I'm forgetting that I'm sure Scent knows the name of. Well, is, uh... Frozen, luckily for you, I am a Pokemon expert. And apparently on the unfocused side of the couch forever. <laughs> we'll live with it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can, we, can, we can trade. You know, you can uh, sometimes... I'll you, over. You, can, you can look correct sometimes. We'll just alter it. We'll make this a co-op couch run in the best of ways. If, if anyone was ever curious if this was live, by the way, <laughs> it certainly is. And of course, we have Lucas, the last of Lucas, the trainers. Lucas, okay. I always play as the girl character, which is fitting for this marathon, so I, I didn't know his name. Exactly. I'm sorry. Shout out to production for letting us know, because neither of us remembered. These are so cool. $10 minimum of the nation for the full set. Thank you so much to Count Gooby for sending those out to us. We also have this lovely set of Amigurumi Eevees here. You get all four of them, Eevee and the original three Eevee Lucians. They are super adorable, right? I love them so much. They're, They're little, just... little knitted. One of them is wearing one of Frozen's broken bracelets <laughs> as a hat. It's an impromptu headband. How could you not love it? They are a super cute collection. They come to us uh, anonymously from a uh, donor who actually won them at a previous event and said, you know what, Sen, I want these to go to a home where they're going to be loved, where they're going to be displayed somewhere prominently. So here we are, $15 minimum of donation for the set of four. You could be taking them home, as well as for a $25 minimum of donation. This absolutely lovely uh, <laughs> Klonoa 
Kalinda, I, I want to call this character Kelowna. That is no! not this character's I'm name. Say that I can't stop saying it wrong. It's just what I want to say. But Klonoa, like, come on. From Caroline Designs. This is a painting, by the way. This isn't a print. This is oil on canvas. How ridiculous is that? The level of detail, the level of shading. It, it almost looks like chalk. It does. Like the it way does. it's drawn. It that's that's like what it reminds me of. Yeah. It's it, amazing. It, it reminds me of like a sidewalk chalk drawing but just taken to 11. Thank you so much to Caroline Designs for sending this and several other absolutely amazing paintings out. $25 minimum donation you could take it home and remember $25 is going to get you one-fifth of the way entered into our grand prize yes. which for this event is a PlayStation 5 console. It's $125 cumulatively throughout the marathon so that means $25 today is going to get you entered into everything we just talked about and more amazing prizes. And it's going to get you one-fifth of the way in order to win that uh, PlayStation 5. Now, Frozen, where should people go if they have any questions about, you know, not just prizes, but all the cool stuff coming up in this marathon? Yeah, if you want to know when all the runs on the schedule are going to be, the incentives and bid wars you can put your money towards when you also donate to win these fabulous prizes, you can go to gamesdonequick.com and look at the tracker. It has all the information that you're going to need for the entire event, when the runs are starting, when we're going to be you know, seeing all these incredible games that we had prizes for today, like Pokemon White 2 coming up later. Oh, that's that's such a cool run. You definitely don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. But for now, stay tuned. Frame Fatales isn't going anywhere. We've got a full day of amazing speedruns lined up for you, and you don't want to miss any of them. All right, folks, are you excited about prizes? Because I'm excited about prizes. Not only do we have some great prizes for you this week, but we've got some exciting runs to look forward to, including the opportunity to meet the Super Mario World 11 exit run. We are just over $1,700 out of 